queue. It's filling up quick. You want to do the um, tickets? tickets? Yeah, yeah, tickets. Uh, now, we're going to be uh, kind of forcing something. There's two parts to this. First of all, Brad really wants to do it. Second of all, when you have new <laughs> sets, unless it's very clear that you shouldn't be doing build arounds. Oh, wow, that was quick. Cool. Bam. Yeah, yeah, it's fast. Um, it, mm, first, so are rare. It's not very good. Um, all right, so we're going to be trying to uh, play for synergy decks. First of all, I think synergy decks are really good in this set. I don't think this is an origin style set. You should be playing synergy. Um, I think the best cards in this are either Lifespring Druid, Ruination Guide, Incubator Drone. I think we should go through the Ruination Guide or Lifespring Druid, and if we want to be big stuff, I think that Lifespring Druid is good. And the other thing is, I think in the pack, the best cards are Incubator Drone, Turnigans, Ruination Guide, and Lifespring Druid. I think Turnigans is the best card, but there's not an art type around it, and I think that Brad really does just want to push big stuff, and I don't mind doing that. So it's it's either Incubator Druid or Life Spring Druid. It's Life Spring Druid. If we're and I think Life Spring Druid helps us the most because what I'm trying to do is force Eldrazi. We're trying to force big, right? So we're looking to be in green number one. Um, I would like to be in green red if we get something like a Rolling Thunder. But if we get good blue cards, any other card really like that. Uh, but let's talk about this. I think that the best pick is Turn Against, and then it really is between Incubator Drone, Ruination Guide, and Life Spring Druid. I think in order it is. Uh, Turn against, and then the uh, Druid and another one. All right. Mm. So we take Rolling Thunder here. So this fits what you want, but it'll probably come back around. It's not even what I really want. It's a beatdown card. So but Rolling Thunder well, just is, is the best card, I think. Well, there's there's a lot in this, too. Uh, Grove Ooh, Rumbler, Grandpa I think, is... Grandpa guy's pretty good. He is. If we were going for an aggressive deck... So is the Giant Mantis. I, I think that the Slider is the pick. Uh, rolling Thunder is hands down the best pick, and whatever our the person before us picked... Was almost definitely wrong. I think Rolling Thunder is Rolling Thunder is the best rare, so It might have been a money card. Good bit of money card. Well, actually, a lot of the rares are powerful too. So, I think most of the rares are worse than Rolling Thunder. Mm, you might be right. I most mean, of the mythics are probably better though. Some of the mythics, like half. Rolling Thunder is one of the probably top ten, maybe five cards in here. So let's see. If we were going white, I would like to have. The Reproach. The Reproach is the this, second uh, best card. This Mist Intruder's not bad. I think you pick up the good... But I would take the uh, Slider Runner over it. Yeah. If Rolling Thunder wasn't here, it would be Reproach. There's no card even close. So. All right. So we've got a Rolling Thunder. So uh, we've got... What, what's with this not it, It's just not loading correctly yet. They'll, they'll fix that. So That's weird. Benthic Infiltrator can be a good card if we're going to end up big ingesters. I, it's the best in GS card. So let's go ahead and uh, reserve that and we'll talk about the rest of the this pack. One? Yeah. All right, this does put us in three colors, though. Well, we might be splashing one. Um, in green being the base, it can be easier. It, it can be hard to splash Rolling Thunder, and it does get rid of the early game utility of it, but being able to later, you know, run one or two mountains, or like two or three mountains, and a couple of uh, Life Spring Druids will help. Um, Mantis is pretty good. The other cards they consider are the Stalwart and the Mantis. The Stalwart's fine to pick up if you're base green starting out, or the Invoker. I think those are all fine. Uh, sure Strike's not bad either. I just think taking the Benefic Infiltrator is a good sign because I think that card's a little bit better. We could also we've go through either of the green cards. We've had three picks. There's no, almost no green or red in this pack. That's really no, Mantis weird. and Stalwart are good green cards. All right, mm -hmm. so we've got another turn against that's very late. And I think that it's either turn against... I think turn against is our pick, just because we'd like to have one. But Evolving Wilds will be good if it wheels. Uh, Scour from Existence, I don't mind one. You don't want more than one. Notice we haven't seen any Eldrazi, even common ones yet. Well, there's, there hasn't really been that many in this pack either. I mean, what... Uh, there's a good ally. Kajumar Beastmaster is a decent ally. Mm -hmm. Is that the only other good card? Like, Turn Against is the oh, this, best card. This pack is not very good. Uh, it's between Turn Against and Scour for Resistance. I would rather take Scour because I'm trying to force Eldrazi. But Turn Against is a better card if we don't get to play Eldrazi. It's probably a better card if we do get to play Eldrazi. Living to, to five is a lot easier. Living to your eight drops is easier when you have five drops. Mm, true. And I like Evolving Wilds. Uh, Alright, so. Let's see. I think that, that we should good. be. 
Yes, the Sky Spawner should not be this late. It's by far the best card. And there's good green cards here too. Both of the green cards at the bottom are decent, so that's a good sign. Mm, so this is a really good green card, this Bella. It, it's fine. I don't think it's um, better than the Sky I'd Spawner. I like the Sky Spawner better. The Sky Spawner is a better card. This is, so it's this a is weird card, because we've only got one green card and we're trying to be base green. So We might just end up being base blue ramp. That's fine too. There's a lot of spawning drones in blue. And there's some in uh, red. Let's see. I really like the Crusade. The Cascade? Oh, it's a Cascade. I can't read. Turns yeah. Out. If we have room for the, the good lands, I would like to have effect lands in here. We're still trying to figure out exactly what colors we are. If we can pick up a couple Evolving Wilds, or if the similar green fixing comes around. Like, okay, there's a second. Lifespring Druid. Um, mm. This is a really good pack. All right, so we have so to I choose like here. I like the Incubator Drone, and I like the Druid. So I think we should... It's tough here. I think I would go with the Druid over anything. I think we should go with the Druid, and if we end up being blue-green blue green with a small red splash for, like, a turn against a Burn Spell and Rolling Thunder, that's not too hard to pull off if we pull up, like, one Fetch... Or, no, sorry, one Evolving Wild or something. <sighs> The, so, we haven't seen any Eldrazi whatsoever, so I think we should take them higher than normal, because I think a lot of people are trying to force this. I think you're right. Um, I think that once the format settles down, that Eldrazi will be a mid to low pick, that you'll pick the ramping and then the Eldrazi. Um, that's also like picking things like Rolling Thunder. Okay. Uh, so, he's alright. I think we're Blaze Blue-Green, and I think we're... Splashing red and getting bit the mobs reclaimer. Let's see, you may put a card in opponent's graveyard if you do get a well, I, that I is think, an Eldrazi. I think, no, no, no. I think we it's should pick, also a creature. I think we should take the Eldrazi ingestors, the good ingestors like Benefic first, and that way, if we get good processors, we can play them. And if we don't, we have one four blockers that are unblockable. I, think I mean, a, I do think that's a better card, but we've already got one. Maybe we should be taking... No, we want two or three, stuff. so if we end up getting processed... Like, uh, the 8-mana the seven, 7 seven eight that gains you 5 life, we could play, like, all of those that we get mm. later. Oh, there we go. There's some of our payoff right there. Merc Strider. You know what? I think we should take Fertile Thicket, actually. No. You that don't think it is? sucks. That card's awesome. Mm, nope. Okay. I don't like that card whatsoever. So right-click it so you can read it. Uh, Not that one. That one just can returns. We reserve card. this one yeah, and then right reserve. click it so we can read. When it enters the battlefield, you may. You do not have to look at the top five of your cards. So if you open up. I know up a, you really like this card. Well, I let think me read it. Let me read it. it to them, though. Yeah, I'm explaining it to them because you can look at the top five and you can decide if you want to land or not. That's that's great. Yeah, that is great. If you have a two I, land it's, hand, it's you great, can keep it. But. Oh, it's just so bad a lot of the time. Why is it bad? Uh, we should take um, mm. Gideon's Reproach. Mm. I like that. It's a we're bank. not playing Gideon's Reproach. Yeah, well, I would rather not play against Gideon's Reproach, though. And we're definitely not playing Earth and Arms. You don't think so? Nah. I think that's a fine card. It's a seven mana six six. I like that this came back around. This yeah. is our original. Yeah, but no one's in it, though. Uh, I think that Gideon's Reproach, we should just not play. Because we're not playing Earth and Arms. It's not good in the oh, strategy. So you're saying we should, uh, just so we don't have to play against it? I think yeah, because we're. a terrible way to draft. It is, but we're not playing any of those other cards. Uh, yeah, but. We should still take what's good for us. Which but, I mean, we're not playing the cards. Oh, uh, we Ooh. might end up playing that one. Um, This guy's okay. Yeah, we should pick the two drop. Mm, I like the four drop as well. But That's fine, but... I mean, we're probably not playing either one of them, so whatever. We're more likely to side in two drops than four drops. Right? I mean, yeah. We're this not is, playing this is the better card. However, we're probably not playing either one. Brilliant mm. spec... Oh, we're taking Sure Strike here. Uh, Brilliant Spectrum, the Converge card, is actually yeah, one of the... Like sure strike. The green really dried up very quickly. Uh, we're probably going to end up forced out of green. It's unfortunate because the Druids are very good. Yeah, they are. From everything that I've played. Uh, the Converge cards are fine, especially for base green. I think that the Brilliant one is the worst of all of them. We should take the Scour. Yeah, I do agree with that. I'm surprised it wheeled. It's actually a very good card. Mm. If you're in the big ramp deck, but I think people It's aren't. weird because this pack didn't really have anything for our deck left. So you would think, oh, maybe people aren't taking the cards for our deck, but we haven't seen a single Eldrazi except for the processor. 
All right, we take so, the uh, sandstone bridge. I would definitely rather have that than anything else. I'll just throw it on that sideboard. All right, we take the war paint. Add sideboard. Add sideboard. Come on, Ulamog. Yeah, we would like a big guy. Show me Ulamog. Uh, we have Brood Butcher, Break of mm. Armies, Blighted Gorge. So let's look at this. This is a good pack. Break of Armies is the best. So I think Brood Butcher is a better card, but I don't know if we want to splash black for it. We're not. If if we weren't in the second pack, if this was our pack one, pick one, we would take Brood Butcher. We would take Brood Butcher over... Uh, the other cards in this... Well, Dominator Drone's pretty good. Well, there's a But you of... usually don't take ingest... Or, sorry, you, you usually wouldn't take Dominator Drone first, I don't think so. If this was the first pick, I would take Brood Butcher. I think the yeah, next yeah, best yeah. card actually is either Break, Break of, of Armies... Armies Followed by Clutch of Currents, followed by Blighted Gorge. I really like Blighted Gorge. But we're going to take the Breaker of Armies. It's at the cusp of almost playable, even if we don't have that much ramp. Mm. And it's a must-answer card. Um, not sure what's going to wheel here. Uh, if we end up being forced into red, there's a lot of good red cards. Playable red I'm cards. okay with the Mantis wheeling. I'm okay with basically any of the red cards wheeling. The Stalwart's fine, too. It's a 2-3 or a 3-4. You never cast it for green, 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 really. That's true. Um, I'd rather not play it, but... It's fine. I mean, do you want to... I mean, are you fine with the 2-3 for One three? One thing I will not take is that scout. <laughs> All um, right. Touch of the Void is probably our pick, because we are not white. Otherwise, it would be Smite the Monstrous. Uh, yeah. we, we, we could take Stone Fury instead of Touch of the Void. Do you want something early that deals damage or something later? My idea for S Touch of the Void is that the green is moderately open that it's easier to cast the one red spell. But Outnumber, Touch of the Void, and Stone Fury are all very good. Stone Fury and Touch of the Void are better in our deck. So we've taken, what, two cards out of a pack? This yeah, round? There's just multiple good removal spells. And, and so you notice there's just not any green in this pack. That's just a weird pack. Yeah. I mean, there's two green cards that's, that are pretty bad. So do you you want to go with the cheaper removal spell that does? Yeah, three? I think the cheaper removal spell is better. I agree because we're going for a that, bigger strategy. Now that being said, uh, we will often do this for many damage, but yeah, the exile might be relevant. I think too. the the low the low curve is better. Uh, mm. We are getting to a point where we have you know a lot of things that uh that aren't green. Yeah, there's just not that much green coming around. We might end up being some sort of blue reddish deck. Mm. Blister Pod Boy, is a good... Land. We should look up the price for them. It's not big, because it's not real cards. Never mind. Yeah, not real cards. Okay, so um, if we're all in on Eldrazi and Accelerating, Blister Pod's better. Otherwise, we should go with Stone Fury over Kozilek Sentinel. Uh, well... I would not pick the Blister Pod. I do not think we have the synergies to use it. I think we should take the removal. Uh, because Blister Pod's really only good in the green-black Eldrazi deck, because you So you want to take Stone Fury over the one fold? Yeah, I mean, the 1 4 is fine, but it's not removal. And having a nice piece of removal in the middle is good. Then we have two pieces of mid cost removal, one piece of cheap removal, and one piece that of. That's like we're playing green. How unfortunate. Green uh, hasn't even need, been open for us to force. We need. Um, well, yeah. We, we need more blue ramp, or the stick is going to fall apart. Though, we've taken every decent Eldrazi we've seen, which is only one. Well, we, so if we never get to play it, I'm fine with that. We also can get more processing cards that buy us more time. The blue red one has mm -hmm. okay. Oh, so well, that doesn't make them any bigger. That does. All right. Um, I think it's too late to go into black. I think we should take dampening pulse or oracle of dust. I like that oracle of dust lets us process, but dampening pulse is a much more powerful card than a lot of people give it credit. It looks like a small effect, but remember, it makes all of the scions zero ones. Takes off a lot of power there. It's very good against um, it's very good against big ramp decks because they're so reliant. Taking that. our processor, uh, I, think I think it the, is. I think there'll be better ones. Um, I don't think there'll be any processors. Well, we also don't have many four drops. We have two five drops. That said, well, one of them's a removal spell, and the other one's basically a removal spell. Oh yeah, they're both. So we spells. might as well take this. Yeah, I just think because we don't have anything to process right now, but we have what three. Three? No, we yeah. have two processor cards. That'll be our second one. Where's the first Merch one? Rider. That's fine. Then. Oh, okay. All right. I think Damage like and Oracle better. are uh, solid cards. Um, 
All right, I think we are on. This guy wasn't very awesome. We're on court home guy. Unnatural aggression? No. No? You don't like that? Okay, here's the thing. We can try to push into selection. green, and we can play a mid grade green card and hope that green's open in the last way, even though we didn't get past any. Yeah, I think yeah. that we should. I think we should go with the curl home guide. It's an early good blocker, and late game, if we get more cards to go with it, it lets us. Well, making Breaker of Armies unblockable is bad, but you know, other Eldrazi can be unblockable. I had a couple in the pre release. Eh, I mean, as long as it kills them, I'm okay with it being unblockable. Oh, yeah, sure. Actually, I really like Rush of Ice better than that. We should probably take Rush of Ice. It's much worse. Then Coral Helm God? Yeah, I that one's a five much. mana card that taps a creature and makes a 3 3. Another one's a 2 1 for 2 in a deck that you're trying to play later game cards in. Yeah, we're not actually going to be able to build that deck, I think. The one time I wanted to force, literally nothing is open. All right, well, uh, there's a couple other good green cards. Uh, that's Worse. marginal. That's okay. We can take the scour, but we'll probably never get to play it. We already have one scour. I think we should take one of the green cards and hope that green's open. I think unnatural aggression is the better one. Yeah, I agree. I don't that's think green's open, but we're not one. playing any of these other cards. Hmm. Like... I can't imagine a situation in which I would to scour. If we get really, really lucky on this step, but we already have two pieces of five removal and a seven. Do you really need multiple sevens? No. I'd rather hedge that green is way more open than we hope and that the packs just broke terribly. Well, if the packs broke this terribly, we're probably not playing it. No. Nope. Unfortunate. Um. All right, so we have two options for it. We can get the Despoiler, which is 6 for a 5-5. Five, five, becomes a 9-9 nine, nine if you get rid of Process 2. Or 7 for a 7-8 that lets you uh, gain 5. Now, I think the better Process card when when you actually process is the Rune Processor. I think the better card is the Ulamog's Despoiler. So I think we should go with the Despoiler. And you have to process what? Two cards and one card. The big thing is a 6-mana 5-5 five five is fine, but a 7-mana seven 7-8 seven is kind of hard to get, and you need the life to catch up back from it. Mm -hmm. They're both fine. I'm fine with going with either. The fact that green is totally not open bothers me. So let's um, go with the... Another unnatural? Another unnatural. Or we can go with the... 4-drop? Whip tail. Uh, it really depends on, let's say we have a three green cards. Probably not playing green, so we might as well stop taking green cards. Yeah, let's take the whip down. So we have forced our way into blue-red processors? Yeah. How annoying. It, everybody is forcing green. I wanted a right draft. Now. This one sucked. <laughs> the deck still might be sucked. Everybody wanted to force just like me. Well, I feel good that we took Lost Rain Druids from people. See, that's the thing I don't get, is that the stalwarts took around. Like, it just means that there might have been a chance that green just didn't break near us. Because the stalwart is a solid card. If you're playing two colors, it's fine. If you're playing two colors and a splash, it's good. Yeah, yeah, we take a 4-3. We're not playing anything else. Well, Whatever. no, no, Blighted Gorge. Blighted Gorge. We'd rather have a land oh, that yeah. does too. That's fine. Yeah, it's much better than a 4-3. Um... Because we're likely to get enough players. We actually don't have any four drops. Well, well, I mean, like, oh, we have two. nobody's in blue red, is what I feel like. Like we're just getting all these processing cards we want. We'll see. Dispel uh, was literally the only instant there. We should just take dispel in case we want to board it. We probably won't, but whatever. Yeah, I mean, we're not. You're. I think Earth and Arms is fine. Uh, I don't think it can come back around though. Destroy target land. Yeah, that's fine. Or the foil land. The foil land's probably worth more, but we're probably not sideboarding this in. Sure. Um, that said, uh, go ahead and pick it. All right, now we take the upheaval. The upheaval's, Is that not a foil land? Too? No, it's a regular one. I think the upheaval's fine, because sometimes you'll play someone who's playing like four or five awakened cards in a flat color deck. A natural connection wheel. Green is open. It's just not breaking. There's just no green in the packs. That card, uh, I think we should take this step A. Really? We're never going to play it. I think the full, land, uh, the full art land's probably worth more. All right, you can go ahead and take it. I don't think the full art lands have any value here. Oh. Well. I think they're worthless online. That's unfortunate. But I don't mind having them. Uh, so it's going to be and weird. The foil one looks good. Yeah. People just don't care that much about foils online. The yeah. only reason people care about foils to online... To make play sets for real life. Is for make play sets. So 
Interesting thing about making playsets online, the worst, literally worthless mythic in paper is worth a few bucks online because of uh, turn-ins. I think it's uh, the Sky Spawner. It's the best card. Hadn't got there yet. Is this all the... No, there's land. Okay. Yeah. The Sky Spawner? I don't even see that one. It's the two... Oh, this two guy. Blue. Yeah, he's the Yeah, best we guy. already got one. He has the best. He's the best common in the set, probably. He's a aggressive attacker, two blocking bodies, and ramp. So... Two green cards, one's multicolored? That's pretty... That's pretty three terrible. Green, three, three green cards. All these are good green oh, cards. Oh, okay. That's okay, green card. I'll look yeah. at that. Bone Splinters is probably the next best card in the pack. Oh, well, if you're in these two colors, this guy is the best card in the pack. If you're in green light, yeah, yeah. So, I and really Angel want that Evolving Wilds. Uh, hopefully we'll get one... For what? What are we splashing for? Mm, evolving Wilds is just good. I mean, it, it is. So. I think that the... The Blighted Lands are better than Evolving Wilds in a two-color deck. Depends how much landfall, but we don't have much, so. Yeah, if you're in, like, a really, really heavy landfall deck, but there's only good landfall cards in green and red. Uh, Let's take the second Rolling Thunder. You are correct. Now, the next best card here um, that you guys want to think a lot about, that people are kind of underrating, I think is Spawning Bed. It's a really good land. You're never unhappy to not have it. or You're never unhappy to have it, especially in the two-color deck. If it wills, I will definitely take it over the rest of this. Uh, unfortunately. Other playable oh, cards. There's a, there's a Devastator. Is, is a Devastator. I think that's about it. Uh, the green card's good. Uh, Fathom Feeder's good if you're in the colors, obviously. I mean, let's see. We have 13 creatures in our deck already. They're not going to end the game quickly, but... Yeah, well, having having two uh, two kind of rolling thunders and... does mean that we can just do you know seven damage past the turn, eight damage. I agree. I don't think Eldrazi Devastator is going to wheel. That's unfortunate. In all fairness, Rolling Thunder is a better eight drop than Eldrazi Devastator. Six damage wherever you want is better than an eight nine usually. It's probably true. The eight nine might just win the game on its own though. Rolling yeah. Thunder probably won at eight mana. But on the flip side, you know, playing an eight mana card and dying to your opponent's tiny creatures is not good. Uh, Deathless Behemoth, on the other hand, is definitely really good. That guy's great. All right, so I think we're actually really good on our curve. I think we just have a reasonable curve with control elements, which oh, so here are all the Eldrazi though. Yeah, there's just two in one pack after the one in the last pack. Uh, so I think we do want the Deathless Behemoth. We definitely do, especially with how many. Uh, the Scion ability, we're going to return Scion. We only have two ways to make Scions right now, actually. I think it's three, But it doesn't matter. It? It's just the two, uh... You're right. It's fine That's without that ability. Being able to play a 6-6 six, six that attacks and blocks well is fine. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah, I think we do only have two. Well, we're looking for Scions. That's unfortunate. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think the other thing is, like, Oop. we have four really expensive cards already, and I'm not even sure we can play all of them. Yeah, we'll probably end up cutting the Scour. Or the Despoiler, one of the two. Adverse Conditions is worth playing, and uh, I think that's the best card. Pilgrim's Eye. Two untapped creatures? It gives you a yes, spoiler. Yes, I like it. Or we can take the Pilgrim's Eye, which gives us a land. Uh, I would rather have Adverse Conditions. We only have two four drops, so fits in the curve too. Uh, Royal Mage's Trick is pretty good, but not for our deck. Uh, uh, I like Rush of Eye. Standard didn't seem to like it too much. I don't mind it. I just don't think it's as good as earlier cards. It's a five drop. So. It's, it's not a one drop. We're not that deck. If we were an aggressive two color deck, then you can play it as one drop. But like, how often are we going to tap one of the creatures to kill them? And the answer is not very often with one fours and. Two ones with flying. So big thing about adverse conditions, even though we're a little bit of a controlling deck, the fact that it makes a token that you can sacrifice for mana adds a lot of versatility in it. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we have a Stone Fury and a Turn Against also helps quite a bit. It means that we have a lot to do. Okay, mm -hmm. so I think we can... Well, there's a lot of different ones. We have the Infiltrator. We can pick another four drop at the Vestige. The Void Trample's pretty good. We have a lot of colorless cards, so Nettle Drone will do quite a bit of damage. How many colorless cards do we have? Mm, so, aren't these the Void? Yep. 
And one, two, three, four, five, six, six seven, eight, seven, eight, nine. Without the freaking display, I don't 13. know. Thirteen. Those are devoid. That's devoid. Also, all these are devoid. So we have thirteen cards. So, so maybe we do want that guy. I think the best card so is I, here. I think all three of those cards are legitimate picks. I think I'd rather. I think I'd rather have the Neldrum. To just be able to plank away at our opponent. I agree. Not to mention we can attack with it and then attack it. And plank, yeah. Then we want. Mm. Really weird that this is still there. I don't think people are taking the ingest. Mm. First thing I saw I wanted. Yeah. Actually, this is better. No, we, we, need need to, we need to power ingest. We, we already have two good ingest cards. How many cards do we have that care about ingest? Is it just one? Well, I thought we had more, far more than that. Uh, the Oracle does. The, uh... The spoiler does. That's it. The spoiler. Oh, okay. I, I mean, the Merc Striker, but I'd rather just have an Evolving Wilds. I don't really want to play Merc Mist Intruder if we don't have to. Yeah, that's fine with me. I, I don't think we'll need it. And with as late as these Infiltrators that have been going around, we might see another one. I don't think anyone else is playing in Jest decks. It's good, because it takes a lot to play an ingest deck. It does, and I mean, people have just been passing Benefic Infiltrators like they're only good in an ingest deck, when in fact they're good in any deck that runs blue. Um, I think we take the Slide Runner? Yeah. Or would you rather pay a lot of mana to tap things? Yeah, I'd rather just have a Slide Runner. Probably better. Having a bunch of two mana two ones with upside is nice. This, this does damage to things and destroys colorless creatures. Taps them. Oh, it taps it. Yeah. Wow. That's really bad. Maybe I should read cards. Um. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind Cavalier. This is just not a card I'm excited to play. I think Mackenzie Slide Slidrunner is a great card. Hmm. All right, there's nothing playable in this pack. Out to well, a foil sylvan scry. Let's go ahead and take a foil sylvan scry so that we can sell that. I'm not playing Salvage drone. It's not playable. No, it is not playable. It's just in our colors. Infused with elements might be t not terrible. If we were in, if you're in the base green deck, like so, the original deck we had planned to play was a base green deck that was hopefully splashing blue and red, playing a little bit of one color and mostly the other. Well, we guess we take the. Uh, Shatter. See, green was open. It just never came around. This is insane. This is dumb. Like green was Even open because of not nobody. Happening. Yeah, I mean, so you're, you're gonna get that with variants. That's just how it runs. I mean, somebody might have been snatching up all the cards. It's very unlikely. But there were there were literally the only guy's not bad though. There were only two green cards in that pack. Remember, and those were the two best ones. Mm -hmm. Like, my mind is blown. Um, and think again, another Snapping Gnarlet. Snapping Gnarlet is a first pickable card, and there's just none available. Uh, we should probably take Snapping Gnarlet, by the way. We definitely do not want to play Lava Stub Raider. You just don't want to die to a Snapping Gnarlet. We can take Territory Bloth, whatever you think is better. I think the Snapping Gnarlet is better, but whatever you think is a better card. I actually think the Territorial is better. All right, let's go ahead and put that on the sideboard. Uh, boop. Uh, Oracle came back around. Uh, that's good. Do we want... Another Oracle, or do we uh, want... I think we want another Oracle because we might be in a situation where we look at our curve and realize we can't play Breaker of Armies or Scour from Existence. All right, we take Romage's Trick for the board. Yep. And uh, if we want to bring it in, we can bring in one green card and your Earthen uh, Arms. Hedra uh, Blade. This is kind of... Depressing. Depressing. Mm, well... Um, Mr. Serifica, Scour is a card you'd rather not play unless you're specifically the big ramp deck. And then you probably don't want more than one, but it's fine to have the first one, um, especially if you really have a good version of the ramp deck, or if you have a controlling deck that's going longer, or out of your board against decks that, uh, play longer on that. Okay, so I guess we should sort by converted mana cost. Uh, sort. Converted mana cost. Let's take the lands out and see how many cards we have. We want to play 18 lands. Alright, so that is a spell. So we need to make two cuts. Display should be okay. We want to put a touch of the void down at the bottom. Yep. 
Adverse conditions down at the bottom. It does make a creature, but it's not a creature that's worth four. Turn against. Scour. I think scour is just a cut, actually. I don't think we even need to look at scour. We have pretty good removal. We have a five removal We spell. actually only need one more cut. All right, so my votes for cuts are either a five drop or breaker of armies. Let's look at how much ramp we have to get to eight. Uh, so we have the two spawns, spawn sky spawn. spawners, the... What else? Adverse conditions. Adverse conditions. Okay. Is that it? Yeah, there's only like That's two other blue unfortunate. cards. Um, I really hate to cut that, but it's looking like it. Mm. I really don't like the Deathless Behemoth. I don't know, no, the, the spoiler, but... Uh, we have there is a good chance we will get the ability off. So I would say most of the time we'll end up having a 9-9 nine, nine for 6, which is better than a... 10 8 for 8. Yeah, so I guess we can cut this, unfortunately. Alright, so I think we're playing a pretty even mix of blue and red. Um, even it though we have double red at top. close. 4, 3, 5, 6, 4. So let's go ahead and pull in our other uh, two colorless lands. Yep. And excitingly, we have Blighted Gorge, which is a very legitimate card. Right? I really like that card. The fact that you can kill a guy spawner, a coral helm guide, right? You can kill a belligerent whip tail. It adds a lot of utility later in the game. I think that the blighted lands are things you should pick up right below your premium creatures. So it's premium removal, premium creatures, mid grade removal, and then I think blighted lands because they fill in a land spot, right? I mean, like imagine if we just picked another creature. That was either, you know, slightly better and we had to cut another card, or slightly worse and we cut it. But instead we get to play a spell land. Like, there'll be a lot of games where we're going to be able to play a Blighted Gorge, tap it for mana a few times, which is almost like a spell, and then later in the game, cash it in for, you know, an okay card. So, it's recommend 10 and 6. I think we should do 9 and 7. Uh, you're probably right. I would like to use my calculator on my phone, but nine and seven not find it. So nine and seven actually puts us at um eight and nine, Four, or sorry, nine six, and ten, eight and ten. So eight because of all the wilds. Sacks were either color. So Brad, explain to people how you're doing your calculations because you okay. Do so I count the mana symbols. So there's fifteen red and nine blue. Add them together, and then take a proportion. So, so he does a flat 15 ratio. Divided by twenty-four, it says about six. Oh, no, sorry, times eighteen. So it says eleven of mountains. So I think that's too many. All right. So the, so. the reason I don't like that is there's two things it doesn't consider. It doesn't consider double costs. Things like thun rolling thunder, right? Actually, it does. Oh, it does. Double costs. You count all the mana symbols. Okay, but you need two of them together. Which is harder than just one. Like, imagine I, if... I'm not disagreeing with you. However, I mean, what's the difference? The difference you're is... Counting. You counting. Hmm? I mean, you, you're just counting all the mana symbols. Okay, let's say that you have a card that's 2-2 uh, two uh, two, two, and it's red-red. You're playing a, a two-drop that's red-red. Do you need... And the, a lot of your later curve is single blue. You need more red than blue even oh, if well, you're... Oh, we'll see, that's red. not the case here, though. It's not. And so most of the high cost cards are double red, so that negates all your math. You don't unless have to do unless it's inverse. But the other part that is uh, important is where your double cards are. All our double cards are red. Fourteen. And all our 16, early cards are blue. So they are recommending nine and seven to give us the correct eight and amount, ten, right? Uh, I don't. Know, their suggestion was different. Their suggestion was was like ten and six or something, or ten and eight. Yeah, it, ours should either be. 8-8 eight, eight or 7-9, and I think 7-9 is correct. Well, all of our early drops are blue, but all of our later drops are double red. I really don't mind either way. I think 7-9, which is 8-10 with our Evolving Wilds, or 8-8, uh, eight, eight, which is 9-9 nine, nine with our Evolving Wilds. I think both of those are acceptable. I, I actually really like the 7-9 uh, the just because that lets us cast um, hmm? our uh, combat tricks earlier, and that's a big thing. Being able to play a McKinney Slide Runner and a Sure Strike early is better than, you know, casting a blue spell on something else. 
Alright. Okay. There's a lot of different ways to calculate your mana. Um, and as the more experience you get, you can try different methods. Yep. And the more experience you are with a particular format as well. Yeah. My phone is not on me. You just can break it. You just said you were looking for... Okay. Would you break it to me? All right, anyway, as Danny was saying, the more experience you get, the better you can calculate your mana. Does it care if I rearrange these? Will it keep those rearranges? I don't know, honestly. Uh, All right, well, let's look at our green. Uh, well, so we can just... Oh, okay, well, we can look at our green, and then we'll uh, just move it somewhere, because we're not playing it, obviously. Oh, yeah. Um, let's put uh, all the good green cards in one pile. That's all of our green cards except for uh, Earth and Arms and Sylvan Scrying, right? As, like, really good green cards. What are you trying yeah, to do? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to show people the cards, but that's really just not working out. So, I like I like all of our green except Earth and Arms is kind of meh. I'm not too big on Sylvan Scrying just because, like, you usually and, don't and have a land Sylvan to get. Scrying, that said, if you have one or two blinded lands and, like, a man land, I'd be excited about it. Mm, when you're colorless creatures against death touch. Okay. It's like an it's ally like card. Probably not happening. So, one of the things me and Brad noticed on the wheels is there were a lot of good green cards wheeling, and I think we ended up in a situation where green just wasn't open in any of the packs. Okay, so here are the cards we might play, and here are the cards we won't play. Oh, yeah. Um, There's two tanks in the garage. I don't know how many, I don't know how much one. Okay. I'll do it. Daniel can uh, string. All right. So, um, to pull, yeah, Mr. Terrifica, there are times where you want, um, Sylvan Scrying. I, the thing about Sylvan Scrying is you only want it if you want to get specific utility lands. You don't want to usually use it to fix your mana unless you're in a situation where you really need mana fixing and you really don't have any available. Um, but all, we have a lot of good green cards, but we never saw green as looking open, but all those good green cards were wheeling so either everyone tried to go in green in pack one, and then everyone abandoned, or there just wasn't enough green to go around, and a bunch of people have bad splashes of green, and or abandoned green, because the early green cards were going around the table like nobody could play early green. Um, which is unfortunate, because that's where green shines. It's got a whole bunch of ramp cards. It has almost nothing else. So looking at our sideboard, I don't know if the spell or the red cards are likely to come in. Rills Mage's Trick can come in against more aggressive decks. Uh, Scour and Breaker of Armies can come in against very like a very controlling blue-red deck or a blue-black deck. All right. And we are a controlling deck. Uh, we've got a lot of early aggression, which counts for a lot with Rolling Thunder. Every bit of damage counts in that one. We've got little pecks here and there. So we've got a lot of little pecking things, a lot of ways to get through small amounts of damage. Um, and then a couple of tricky cards near the top end, right? Turn against Shatter Skull, or sorry, turn against Stone Fury. Uh, this can often be a two for one. It can sometimes be a bigger blowout. If your opponent plays around, it can still make it hard for him. And having it to go with Stone Fury means that we can uh, make it a little bit of either on it. Let's go ahead and submit real quick. That we can uh, leave the mana up and have Stone Fury or turn against available. Um, Unfortunately, Adverse Conditions doesn't work too well with that. It'd be nice to have a couple more instants, but we didn't. Overall, I think it's a good deck. Unfortunately, we weren't able to go into what we wanted to originally. There might have been better stuff, but I don't think this is actually the kind of deck you want to start with either. Uh, I don't think that this deck's normally going to come together. I think people were undervaluing the good blue and just cards. There were lots of good processors later. Uh, we, we passed a Benefic Infiltrator, and we have two. We have two Sky Spawners. Uh, we did pick one first, but we got the other ones late. All of those are excellent cards. And the fact that we got a Rolling Thunder pass to us, like, third or fourth, that's the kind of card that I'm willing to do things to get in my deck. It's the kind of card that will win you the game. So let, let's talk about it a little bit. Yeah, Mr. Terrific, we only did pick up one Nettle Drone. Um, there were more available earlier, but we weren't sure where we were at. And Nettle Drone's the kind of card that you want to have a little bit more clarity as to how many colors cards you're playing. Oh, gosh, that is tiny. All right. 
let's go ahead and all right so we're definitely keeping this hand it's a little bit heavy on early play or sorry on lands it's not too bad with the McKinney slide runner we can play McKinney slide runner maybe in a touch of the void we'll play blighted gorge last go ahead and move this over here out of your guys way oh it's the green opponent All right, and we will be starting with the um, with the slide runner first, just because it gets in more damage. So we'll be going slide runner either into touch of the void or slide runner core home. All right, so our opponent's got the Snapping Gnarlids. Uh, could be trying to race each other here. The Benthic Infiltrator will do quite a bit against the Snapping Gnarlid. It'll block it back, which is very nice. And it'll let our McKinney Slide Runner kind of get through. If our opponent plays a lane and attacks in, then we'll take the damage. Um, I'm hoping they have a land drop here. It's going to be real hard for them to get anywhere if they don't have a land drop. Okay, yeah. Nothing else, huh? Alright. Let's go ahead and drop the mountain. Go to attack. Attack with R3-2. Go to our main phase, and here we'll be dropping... The Infiltrator, it blocks the uh, Snapping Gnarled. We don't particularly need um, Ingest right now. We have a Touch of the Void to Ingest if we really need one as well. So we're going to go ahead and play the uh, Belligerent Whiptail and just have a kind of an army of Landfall guys chipping in damage now. And as our opponent kind of turns the battle around, we'll try to stabilize a little bit more. I don't think my opponent should attack here unless they have a combat trick. It's a bad bluff. Oh, little arrows come up. Power arrows. All right, so my opponent's in the tank here trying to think if they want to attack or if they have a combat trick or if they want to play a spell. Um, killing the Benthic Animal Trader is definitely worth it. Our opponent doesn't know if we have ingest or not. Um, I'm assuming the next few turns are going to look like a belligerent whip telling to some other... Oh, wow. Sorcery speed. Well, we're definitely not doing anything with that there. My opponents can attack for five. It's a little tricky because the touch of the void doesn't get rid of the uh and no other plays. Alright. So we can hit for four. Now we can either play the sky spawner and chump and attack with both because we're not blocking here. And I think think that's the best play or we can try to race by playing our own belligerent whip tail I think that this guy spawner is the safer play although we can wait and play coral helm and the sky spawner in the same turn we'll go down to eight yeah let's go ahead and put our opponent really on the back foot here and there's nothing with haste Except for a couple of awaken cards, but there's not very many awaken cards in a um, black green. Don't mind me, just interrupting the stream. All right. Let's see what we uh, ingest here. We ingested a forest, which is good, fine. I mean. Not a big deal either way. Our opponent took a very high risk, high reward play. If we draw a, um, 
Alright, we'll take the five. We've got a seven. Oh, our opponent's thinking about holding back on it. Um, our opponent has only played a Snapping Gnarled and an Earthen Arms. On the plus side, that has done a ton of damage to us. On the downside, our opponent really doesn't have a board. And we're about to start playing Chump Blockers for a 5-5 five five while we beat them to death with our creatures. Cool. I had to go um, attach a new Propane Tank. It's an excellent card. That Catacomb Slug would be very, very powerful in blunting our Assault if we didn't have this Touch of the Void. So, unless we get a land, we can't touch the void and play a block. We can't. Oh, we've got we a wide land. Push. Woo! Oh, our opponent's bull bone splinterings. And I think they're going to bone splinter the worm. Not a bad play. So did they use that card I really like to put two counters on that thing? They did. Alright, so we're going to play the Touch of the Void, Kill the Catacomb. Yep. Attack. Well, we have to decide if we want to block with the Benful Infiltrator or keep back the Coral Helm. Yeah, I think we should attack with both and block with the Coral Helm. I believe you're correct. Now, if they have any sort of removal spell... They're going to probably kill us. No, we'll be at three. Wait, is, doesn't it landfall? Okay, For so they one. need a land and a... Oh, okay. So they play a land removal spell, we go to oh, two. Oh, okay, that's not the landfall two guy. All we'll right. play an Eldrazi Skyspawner. If any time we get anything like a... If we get one move. mana, then we're good. Yeah, our opponent doesn't have anything in hand. Like, our opponent hasn't played anything. This is speaking to the power of, you know, an unanswered Earth in Arms, but the fact of the matter is we have a lot of cards that can answer it. We just haven't drawn them. We could draw a bounce spell. There's a lot of ways that Earth and Arms goes bad. Mm -hmm. Just like any aura, right? Any aura? Auras, yeah. Auras, enchantments that go on creatures. Auras. But it's not an aura. No, no, no. Like any aura. I mean, it's an aura effect, right? I mean, it's essentially an aura. Now, I, I think it's more like the... Um, I don't know. What is that spell that does the exact same thing but doesn't have... Uh, yeah, 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 but it's an aura effect. It's an effect that enhances your creature, that if they kill your creature, you lose two cards. Because you played the card to enhance the creature and the creature. My opponent didn't attack. Um, okay. Well, we didn't draw a land. Okay. Well, well, But we can't be blocked by that one guy, and you can spend five to not be blocked again. I think you should play the flying creature, though. I am. And then I think you should play the other... I can't play both. Oh, you have five. Yeah, but I'm going to play the, the, the spawn. That way, if they kill something, I have something to chump with. And so I can play the deathless behemoth next turn. Oh, speaking of... You, you actually should have played the other one. They have a reach. I just want the spawn. Uh, Alright, so you're just going to attack for one. Yeah. yeah How yeah, many yeah. cards have you ingested? Um, I have three cards exiled right now. Oh, good. So you can play any of our ingest things and get a huge buff. Or process things, not ingest. Yep. Uh, two of them have been lands. Uh, and a blister pod, which is meh. And they played the Catacombs. So ingest isn't like, you know, ingest anything sweet. But that's the thing with ingest. It is a neutral effect as far as your opponent drawing or not drawing. You could ingest their bomb. You could ingest them closer to their bomb. Yep. Not something to worry it's about. It's random. I will say that if you're playing a deck that runs one single uh, planes for a splash, you may want to put in the second one against an ingest deck, because when they ingest your planes and you need it to play things, you'll be in a bad spot. They should attack with So what's uh, the uh, landfall trigger do on the red creature? It's a 1-1, one, 1-1. One, one, one. They're the same. All the combat ones are 1-1, one, one except oh, for the uh, okay. expensive ones. If our opponent attacks, we'll offer a trade. They don't have anything in hand. Our opponent's not offering anything. They're, they're going to lose the game at this rate. Just by not offering anything. Well. Sometimes you win. Um, There's no reason to attack. We'll attack with the Benefic. And yeah. then after that we will play, play the Eldrazi. Yep. The Vigilance Eldrazi. Yeah. And our opponent can trade both of, or one of their creatures for ours. Which we would probably at this point... Just kill their snapping drake. Or their snapping gnarled. They can do what now? They can double block. Which that's fine. Oh, the Eldrazi? 
Yeah, by all means. And also, well, you know, this Blighted Gorge does go to players. Our opponent's just a couple turns away from just being dead. Well, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Oh, also, couldn't we use the Blighted Gorge to finish off their other creature after they block? We can. I think the that's more likely... correct? Yeah. If our opponent doesn't kill the Deathless Behemoth, I'll probably be tempted to make it unblockable and attack with everything. They got two of the cards out of your hand, it looks like. No, 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 no. Instant speed, sacrifice a creature, draw two cards. Oh, okay. Our opponent needs some sort of something. They really haven't been getting a lot. Uh, their draws have been pretty awful. Yeah, Mr. Terrifica, um, we're here just to talk about, like, beginning and mid-level drafting theory in multiple different card games. It's all... Some games have different emphases, but the games are mostly the same for the whole part. Woo! He also likes the sound of his own voice. Which I love he has it. a pretty nice voice. I, I can give that to him. All right. Now we need to think. We do not want... Uh, so it rearranges all the cards again, so uh, kind of waste their time. It seems like we're not really wanting to sideboard any of that stuff in. Yeah, we don't want to be more aggressive. Now, now so the war, yeah, the war paint would help us be more aggressive, but it doesn't seem like something we need to do. No, we're the more controlling deck overall. Um, I didn't see enough of their cards to think I liked Royal Mage's trick. The card that I would normally pull out for Royal Mage's trick would be something like either Merc Strider or an Oracle of Dust. Unless our opponent was super, super, super aggressive, and then I would pull out um, six drops. The Ulamog's despoiler just because it doesn't have vigilance. Like, our opponent's unlikely to kill a 6-6. Six, six, That's true. And being able well, to attack... also unlikely to kill a 9-9. Uh, nine, nine, right, right, right. But the vigilance makes the big difference. Yeah. We can attack through and still keep defense. Yep. All right. I think we built an okay deck. Now, uh, one question. Does the Stone Fury, can it go to the face? It cannot. Okay. I, I didn't actually read the card. It's a 3 red red, and it deals damage... Um, to target creature called Lumber of Lands you control. Okay. And it's an instant. Now, there's a sorcery speed version of that in the Gruul clan from uh, Ravnica um, well, Return. there's the one for a number of uh, snow lands you have for one. That's Why couldn't they it. print that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> we'll go ahead and keep this. It's got lands It's got lands. It's got creatures. Seems like a great keep. Depending on what our own plan is, we'll either start with the Nettle Drone or the Sky Spawner. I um, would definitely start with the Nettle Drone. Well, if they play a 2-2. I'll probably still start with an Eldron. I like to trade with it. But if they play a ground creature, I don't want to die. I don't want to block. I, I think you, you almost always play the Nettle Drone, though. You think that the one damage over multiple turns is better than the initial well, so, extra one damage you get from the... Uh... So if they attack you with their 2-2, two -two, say, you attack them with a 3-1 and then untap it. By casting another spell. Yeah. So I think the only, the only way Nettle Drone is worse is if... They well, let's say they drop play. a one toughness creature, right? A one power creature. Yeah, one, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, a one power creature. Like, let's say our opponent played. I, I don't know if there's any spells that make an Eldrazi spawn, but they play a card that spells an Eldrazi spawn. Then, then you wouldn't want to cast it. There aren't many of those spells that are two mana, right? No, they're much more conservative. So in the original set, they made zero ones, and you can make more, but they impact the board less. I do not think this is a particularly good card, unless our opponent has lots of cards. That this is the one. That gets Creature gains death touch or one life drain. Yeah. Whenever you landfall. So, so that will potentially drain us for five. Probably. And heal them. So ten point life swing over the next five to eight turns is not terrible. The problem is when you draw it late, it doesn't do enough. Yeah. Yeah. This is basically the best case scenario for them to draw that. It's played on turn three. However, it's going to look real terrible when we start swinging at them for three. If they were in the black-white life game matters theme deck, I'd have a lot more respect for the card. I don't think this is a bad card when you have a lot of those cards that have those weird little triggers. This is a synergy-based set. Um, that said, the life game synergy isn't good enough on its own, but if it's in the black-white ally shell, it's fine. Yeah, our opponent drained us one. Was there a way to always yield to this trigger so you don't have to worry about that again? When that comes back up, I can. But I I'm, yeah. I mean, you're never going to. Stop. Oh, call the signs. That's the perfect reason not to be playing Nettle Drone. Wait, yeah, of course, didn't know nice. that was coming out. Uh, all right, be sure you use Nettle Drone and then cast your spell, just so there's no weird. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're definitely not attacking to that. Now, you sure you don't want to play the four mana one? That oh, one, that taps creatures. Yeah, that just taps two creatures. 
The other thing is if our opponent waits long enough, we're going to play a Shatter Skull Recruit next turn. And then after that, we might just Rolling Thunder those off the board. Oh, I think we're just going to wait. We might touch it. Actually, I think Rolling Thundering them off the board is a good plan because they probably have an Eldrazi somewhere in their deck. That's true. And they do have quite a bit of mana right now. They have six. We could have attacked with the Nettle Drum, but I'd rather not. I think that's a bad play. Just be sure you don't click through doing them one more damage. Yep. And the damage will matter. The gaining life will, will definitely put a... Uh, oh, stall. they gave one of them... Uh, nope, they did not. I would have given them one of them Death Touch. That said, I would have traded my Eldrazi sign for theirs. No, I wouldn't bother giving them plus because it kills any of your stuff already. Oh, yeah. Well, that's now, really unless they're going to go ahead and attack. If they're going to go ahead and attack, which is a poor play because you have six attack and they have two attack... Yeah, they just attack with the Then movement. making it three attack might be good, but still not worth it. Boop. Alright. Now, there are a lot of Eldrazi at eight mana. Right? So they have seven. So do you want to waste the Rolling Thunder on the off chance that if they drop that, you, you cannot do anything about it? They drop an Eldrazi on the next turn, you are losing this game. Mm, Alright, let's go ahead and do that. So, so how many do you need to pump into this to make it good? Oh, Four, so you might as well pump five and hit Yeah, you're going to hit them for one. Choose any number right. of creatures. Okay. How much would you like to pay? Oh, okay. And then you tap the appropriate amount of mana? Choose any number of creatures. Man, that is a complicated spell. Wait, did it let us tap? Let's cancel. Let's tap all of our mana first. Okay. Sometimes things like this work oddly. Yeah, it's hard to tell what they want. Oh, okay. It, it probably would have wanted you to tap the mana after. Yeah. So, either one would have probably been fine. Now, they did not sacrifice them for mana, did they? No. Okay, because they didn't have anything to do with them, obviously. But now they get hit for six, and it only cost us one card. So, so Brad's point was very... We, we wasted... Or we didn't waste. We used a very powerful card, but the situation we could have been in is looking at very powerful Eldrazi. Mm -hmm. so I it, mean, an eight-drop Eldrazi would have killed us before we could have do, done anything. So There's very few cards we would have had that could answer it. Um, and we're in a very mm -hmm. commanding position now. Yep. And not to mention we did six damage on top of that. Yep, six additional. So it turned into seven damage because of that ability. Um... Our opponents gained quite a bit of life. They gained uh, three. three. Yeah. Otherwise, they'd be at every, eleven. Every turn, right? Yep. So we're gonna play next turn the uh, Shatter Skull Recruit, unless our opponent plays some sort of Eldrazi. That's the other thing I like about adverse conditions: is it taps two creatures, and then it allow. It's just a death touch. two three death okay. touch. Yeah. Whenever you gain life, that's pretty cool. Uh, they obviously just drew that. They wouldn't have waited. All right, we're gonna actually gonna go ahead and play. Uh, uh, going to kill it, hard. right? Yeah. Uh, of course, if you kill it, you can't really... Uh, yeah, do that first. That's fine. We'll just beat them down. We yeah, have a turn I against mean, in case our opponent plays something big. Six-point six swing is pretty good. It's a one more than that. No, what? Uh, don't... Yeah, don't click them. <laughs> I was going to click them with my nettle drone. Oh, what, what are you doing? Undo. Undo. Oh, I have two through it. I didn't mean to do that again. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That was a bad play. Yeah, he just misclicked. He should have attacked with that. That's what I meant to do. And it's too late to hit undo when that happened. So he missed out on two points of damage. Which is a moderately big deal. We have one card to ingest. One card that we have ingested? No, 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 no. We or not. One card oh, cause it Oh, because we destroyed it. And get another life, I suppose. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If our opponent plays a three power or more creature, we'll kill them. Okay. That's excellent. We ate a five mana removal spell? Yep. Beautiful. Couldn't have done better. All right, we're uh, going to hold our landfall card just because I don't think we'll have enough to play two cards. Uh, yeah, you should always hold the one, I think. Uh, because A, you have landfall, don't you? Yeah. And B, uh, you can always play a land, so having the one in your hand doesn't mean anything. That's correct. Unless you need it right then, which we did not. 
All right, our opponent's back on the back burner. Um, our opponent really doesn't have any ways to win. Turn against is too powerful of a card. That's good. That might... Yes, that would do it. Uh, that make another creature? Yeah. Uh, We're just going to adverse conditions. Um, so this is the rare situation where... No, we've just been at eight. Never mind. If we could have gone up to nine by playing another land, if we drew land, then it would have mattered, but... Mm. Yeah, we just play land. All right, we will adverse conditions and tap down two of their cards. And then swing for free with the menace and the fly. And then hit for six, or... I mean, we can go ahead and throw the Eldrazi at them just to make them block. I think we will. You didn't get. Did you get to choose two targets? Yeah. Oh, it didn't look like you did. Like as soon as you clicked that second time, it jumped to the next thing without keeping them targeted. Yeah. Totally threw me off. So they have to block. Uh, and they can only block the spawn, right? Yeah, and the reason we're blocking is because that means that they'll have to later double block the menace, but we're actually going to turn against one of their creatures. So they can't, and they die. Right. Unless they play another creature in which they still die to the fly. They need to play a board wipe. So. And, and if they play a board wipe that's and That's not possible in their colors. Then we'll turn against. Um, yep. I don't think there's a colorless board wipe. I think you're correct. No. There's no single card that will save them now because we have both a flyer There's and a miss. There's nothing to save you now, Mr. Bond. In fact, Bond. just with what's on our our field, there's nothing that will save them. Right. And assuming they, they tap out or anything that I'll save the turn against, it's the kind of card that you'd rather not show. Uh, so let's talk about turn against. Well, right. even though we're about to win. Oh, oh, this is the second game, isn't it? Certainly. I forgot. Never mind. Um, turn against is a card that if you do not play around it, will be one of the most back-breaking cards in the format. If you do play around it, because either you know your opponent does it, or they're trying to represent it, right? They have five mana, they pass to you, and they have cards in hand. And they, that probably means they have a turn against you. should play around it. To play around it, you usually only attack with a... You attack with your 2-2 two, two flying instead of your 4-4 four, four flying, so they can't play it. Oh, look, our opponent has really Whoa. good cards. Wicked. You know what they can't do? Um, what can't they do? They can't plus one to draw a call and lose life. Wah. That's that's funny. Oh uh, yeah. Anyway, they're still dead. But that's a cool card they had. Now they're only dead because of what's in our hand. No, no, our inner flyer. Yeah. So let's yeah. see how this works. You don't actually have to do anything but attack. I don't have to attack. I'm better than that. You're hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Lands go. So, I mean, you know, we have a lot of kind of tricky things, a lot of things to do. And then, like, the Blighted Gorge, right? Uh, the other thing about Turn Against is we could be in a position where we have a Blighted Gorge up, and we pass a turn, and our opponent's like, oh, they're not doing anything. They can Blighted Gorge and that kind of stuff. But the, the advantage to Turn Against also is, all right, Brad, it's turn nine. I drew a card. I passed the turn to you. What do you think's in my hand? I have, like, nine lands out. I have, like, oh, six lands. Probably a land. Okay. So Brad makes his attack to win the game. I turn against and blow him out. He can't. Pl you can't play around it. Yeah. The the cool thing about turn against is he declares his attackers. I take one of his attackers. It untaps and use it to block. Yeah. Therefore, I may use his creature to both kill it and the creature another creature. So I kill two of his creatures uh, and block an attack for one card, and which is a call to two for one. <laughs> and it's usually a very good one because you're choosing the cards. Um, there can be situations where your opponent's doing an alpha attack and you ruin it by killing two of their creatures and blocking other creatures. Uh, you can use it like we almost did in one of those games where you just steal one of their creatures and attack with it. The old act of treason. Yep. So there's a lot of different uses for the card. Um, when your opponent starts playing around it, the blowout potential reduces in the middle of the game, but you can't play around it forever. Even if you see one, you know, late in the game, you can't just wait. We're in the double Rolling Thunder turn against deck. You can't, you know, you know, you're damned if you wait. You're damned if you don't. Daniel was super excited about Rolling Thunder. I am super excited. About and Thunder. I'm glad we took two of them. Oh. And we, we got to use one to just uh, start pushing them in. That was yeah. pretty good. Our opponent, you know, 
I don't think they drew anything big because they didn't play anything big. But Brad's... Yeah, I think they, they just had real poor draws that time. But Brad's right. If they had an 8-mana card, let's say that they had... And a 8-mana eight eight, eight mana Eldrazi or when they start to get devastating. Yeah, could have been an Eldrazi Devastator. Could have been a... <laughs> yes, it could have been a pun. Thank it, you, Daniel. But it also, like, it <laughs> could have been a Breaker of Army. There's a bunch of... It could have just been the Rune Processor, the 7-mana 6-7, six, seven, like... We could have killed the 6-7. It would have required all of our cards. That would have sucked. Could we have done that one turn? I don't know that we could have. Ah, uh, three, four, five, six. I think we would have just died. So we, we just would have played, like, the 4-4 four, four with that as well. We would have had to kill two or three of our creatures to do it. Which is rough. So we would have had to block, and then... You would have had a double block. We would have had double block. And our opponent would have had, had no tricks. Not that so that anyway, I, I think that was the best play is to to kill their potential to get the eight mana, and that just goes to show that the, now should we have actually gone one step further and as soon as they played it burned it out because we had the mana as I, soon as they had the two we could have burned them out with a rolling thunder and then attacked I think which the, would have put them put more damage on them actually I think that the right place to place it because we had other things to play was where we did where's that we did because the eight cost and the seven cost are the maker breaks. I, I agree. Um, and, and we got to put a lot more damage on them. we got to expand our board. Because our opponent could have sacrificed it for something okay. They could have been keeping it back. But if they played a 4-4, four, four, I mean, is that really that much? I mean, we could deal with the 4-4. Four, four. We could just kill the 4-4. Four, four. Well, yeah, but the 4-4s the four, are not more than... 5-mana. Uh, 5-mana, yeah. So. Right. So they could just play those. They, they, they didn't need the creatures. The only thing I was worried about was what they could play with the two drones. Yep. So. That, that turned out really well. Yeah, we have a minute here. Um, Perhaps so, several. <laughs> probably quite a few. We won very fast. We were the first people done. Yay, us. Uh, it actually took us 27 minutes, but it didn't feel like This it. is a slower set. Now, so th- something I want to talk about is initially when Brad said... I can't wait to play this new archetype and force it. The first thing that ran my thoughts was, man, that's going to be rough. The second thing was, it's a new set. We should play new things. Brad's completely right. When new sets are out, you want to play... You want to figure out mm-hmm. if it's good to play uh, niche decks, if it's good to do build-arounds. In a set like Orton's, it's terrible. There's no build-around deck, unless you get rares. Nope. It's all, have you seen my 2-2s for two? Yep. That's a first pick. In this set, a 2-2 for a two is not very good. Mm-mm. It's not... And another thing that I had hoped was that everybody would be like, oh, Eldrazi are just not that good because you need all the ramp. And they would uh, take a couple Eldrazi, realize they weren't getting any ramp because I was taking it all, and then I would get the late Eldrazi and win. However, green did not break this time, but we ended up with a good deck because we just took the other good cards in the packs and committed to colors early as opposed to waiting. And committing to colors and just sticking with it, even though sometimes there's a better card in another color that we're never going to play, uh, I think it's just a better way to do it in this set. Yeah, we weren't open too long. Um, the thing yeah, is that- we, we locked down our colors and we locked them down quickly. We stayed in green until about halfway through the second pack, but then we realized we had three green cards and weren't really staying with green so much as just taking amazing green cards, which we can't even look at because the client won't let us. Yeah, that's something really annoying. Uh, the other thing that's that's nice is, as I was saying, is when you draft this deck, even later in the season when it's appropriately rated, you want to take the ramp first. The ramp cards with the ramp cards, and if you don't get the Eldrazi, let's say you get some sixes. Well, now you're ramping to fives and sixes. That's an okay, Which is okay. strategy. Yeah, get, in a in a normal set, that would be great. Uh, in this set, it's just ah, well, I couldn't ramp to Eldrazi, so I ramped to five and six drops, but I still got them out on turn four or five and. That was fun. And I think you're almost... It's very, very unlikely you won't get one of the common 7 or 8 drops. We either there's a Rune Processor and it'll drop you Devastator. Mm, it's, it's hard to know that without drafting it multiple times, but I think you will get at least one big card if you try. Yep. Now, getting 3 or 4 like we did? Maybe not. Of course, one of ours is just a removal spell. So... Yeah, the Scours are not the payoff, by the way. That's the uh, that's the payoff for being the person in the deck. While, while we're just sitting here, see what Sylvan's Crying is on the internets and foil. Okay, we'll check Because uh, we just took that because it might be worth money and there was nothing in the pack anyway. So. I don't know how to spell Sylvan's Crying. There you go. There it's we two go. words. Yeah. All right, Sylvan's Crying foil. Battle for Zendikar foil. Foil online, 69 cents worth 
every penny. Look at that amazing picture. Yeah, we we will. Turn I wish this I up. had a real life foil of them. They look so good. Yeah. Because um, real life foils are a worth money and yeah. Let's look at the prices for this. Uh, let's look at the prices for the set. That's not something we we got a chance to do yet. Um, that's that's true. In the car. And we want online. All right, and let's do this by price descending. Okay, so, so Gideon, as you would expect, the most expensive, then Odnissus, and then Ulamog. You would act, actually Ulamog would be higher, in my opinion. The format is much more competitive online. There's not a lot of casual play, and he has the potential to be a good card, but he doesn't have a home yet, and he hasn't posted results yet. I truly hope that they make the client amazing. Uh, and then right after that, I hope they make it so that you can video chat while you play on the client and then play uh, EDH or, as it's more commonly known, Commander. Because people, online Commander might be fun if you could video chat with people. People do that using other things. They play uh, multiplayer and, EDH. And much like WoW, who you, you can use their uh, integrated video, actually. I think they've discontinued it. Uh, most people just use some other thing. I hope that they integrate it and make it good enough that people want to play EDH because that would open up a whole new market online. Yeah. So is that the... What is so, that? So here we go. Throat. Zula Port Cutthroat. This is a combo oh, enabler. Okay. It's good. It's half of a um, Blood Artist, but it's the good half. It's your creatures. Um, it's 63 cents, which means this is a playable card. It's more online standard. than in paper. Yes. Hardcore. Because it's, it's going to be keep going down until they pass each other, but... Yes. Um, and Trangress the Mind. I think these are both key cards that people are looking so, at building standards. Trangress the Mind, do you think that can make it into modern? I think it costs one too many mana. I think you don't care about getting cards converted main cast three or greater. I think even if it costed one, people don't play Appetite of Brains. And does it cost one or two? Appetite of Brains is a black for a sorcery, and it exiles a card that costs yeah, four or more. I'm not sure. Uh, what is so that there, you hit a a a a a a Appetite for Brains? Yeah, here we go. Absent Restore. Now, it Uncommon. Is, yeah, it's four or greater, but it's just... And it's one mana. So, it, it bothers me that they printed a much worse card instead of reprinting the much-needed card that they should have reprinted. That said, there are two points. Uh, cards that have Devoid are at a premium, because we don't know what the card's going to plant, and it's three or above, which is way better than four or above. I agree. They sh really should have reprinted, what's it called, Inquisition of Kozilek. Though... Inquisition of Kozilek, legal and standard at the same time that, uh, what, what is the other name card that's way better? Thoughtseize. Thoughtseize is legal, would be terrible for standard. Thoughtseize <laughs> rotated. Okay. Oh, Thoughtseize yeah. rotated? So, well, never mind, they should have reprinted Inquisition of Kozilek. The reason they did not reprint Inquisition of Kozilek? Because you think it's coming next set? I hope you're right. Because it's not Devoid. And all of the Eldrazi cards are Devoid. Mm, that's unfortunate. Fortunate. It's true, though. You it, think next set it's possible. Okay, so let's say that the theme for Ulamog, because this is Ulamog's set. All of his guys are Ulamog, and there's like one person for um, Americal, and there's two cards for Kozilek, right? There's only three cards that aren't Ulamog. Ulamog. If the other ones are about not being, if the other ones are colored cards, there's a chance, but I don't think they will. I think that all Eldrazi so you cards. I think they're sticking with Ulamog. I think all. No, no, no. I think that Kozilek is in the next set. Uh huh, but I think all Eldrazi cards will always be devoid, which means Inquisition is unprintable. But they should reprint it in Modern mm, Masters. It'll probably be in Modern Masters. I really don't want to wait another two years to get another Inquisition. I think it should be in. How, how much are Inquisitions right now? Thirteen dollars. That's the Modern Event Deck. One. What's the other one? It's probably thirteen dollars. Twelve seventy-five. Okay. Is there another one? It's just going to be more expensive. That's the basic one. Eh. Nope. Uh, okay. They should release it more things. What's a foil one run? Uh, over 9,000. Ah, hurt your heart. Um, but you can tell which cards are, are standard sort of either speculative cards or all-stars by looking at a price list for online and looking at the uncommons. Zulaport, Cutthroat, Train Dress, the Martin. These are cards you're going to see a lot of. Um, What's Catacomb the Scepter. Full foil this time? I don't know. Let's That's see. usually a good card. I think it's the uh, haste guy. Not helping. Uh, Buy a box. Battle 4 is in the car. 
Buy a box promo. That looks like an official website. What? That's terrible. That's the gift box. That's it's always an uncommon. Oh, it's Ruinous Path. It's better than I thought it was. Well, that's an excellent buy box foil. Yeah. Uh, and that'll help the price of that be reasonable, and maybe it won't hit $15 like its much better counterpart did. So, Scythe Leopard is actually a very good card. Um, it goes in the uh, the landfall deck, and if that and that deck will get a big boon when the second set of those block comes out because there'll be more landfall quality. My so. only gripe is that it's uncommon and cannot be impoverished. <laughs> yeah, only gripe. Not a bad gripe. All right, so let's go back up to the top of this list. I'm just seeing how far down the thirty cents card goes. That, that's a pretty good place to be. If you pick up a few thirty cents cards, save them, and then turn them in for a, a tick, that's not bad. Um, and like uh, lantern assuming scale, you can actually sell them for these prices. I don't know how accurate that is for sale. A lot of these are going to drop, but as the tournaments come up, some of the rares will go up. But a lot of the uncommons will drop. Like right now, you can make a lot of money off this set because you can sell these cards for half their price, and it's not hard to get to like four or five ticks. Ah, uh, so let's go back to the top here. Uh, these are all mythics, mythics, mythic, 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 mythic. The lands, prairie. Are at five Cinder. each. Oh, that's pretty good. And wonder how much they are in paper. Check. Why is Kiora so cheap? What is up with that? Kiora's gonna be more expensive in paper. It's because she doesn't have a home online right now. Actually, she it's doesn't have a home. A home period. That's why she's cheap right now. That's she's unfortunate. A Kiora is a pretty powerful card. So, so in in are we still not playing yet? Is it still not alerted us? These people need to hurry up. <laughs> they do. We're, we're waiting on Crossfire with a K and Murzerd. With Murzerd. a Z. With a Z. With a just to keep just too cool. there. Okay, but uh, really too though. cool for ending their game. Uh, so for, I don't mind first picking these. First of all, they're worth a lot of picks. Second of all, there's a good chance you're going to be playing them. Like, if you end up in a... If you end up in a two-color deck, all right, you're probably playing them. If you end up in a Converge deck. If you That's end up a true. two-color deck... That wants a converged I, card. I would not want to end up in a converged deck. I think. Okay. okay I think it's a trap. No, no, no. Sorry, let me rephrase that. You're not in a converged deck. You're in a two-color deck that plays converged cards that are fine for two and great for three. Which is why we didn't want to play the four mana one, the three blue, uh, draw. What is it? Draw. Did you even see that card? Yeah, we did. Oh, okay. Brilliant. Ignored. Spectrum or whatever. You, you draw equal to um, the converge, and then you discard two cards. Now, if you pay four colors for it, you draw four, discard two. That's a good card. The problem is all the other cards are bad. Draw three, discard two is terrible. The the one that we actually drafted, which is minus uh, X minus Royal zero, Mages is great. okay, but it's still not still not great. I don't think the it's payoff fine. is there. I mean, it, the thing is, you draw a card with it though, and you can cast it whenever you want. It's okay. So if okay. you cast it on it's two, it's not great. If you cast it on two, it's fine. The thing I don't like about that card is it's actually not much better as it gets bigger. Like the difference between two and three and four is there, but often against the decks that you want to play against are a bunch of creatures with two power. Man, I'm really concerned that the uh, the man lands are higher. Well, when they start placing, they'll do better. Did you say man land? Yeah, that's that? what they're called. They're lands that are mans. That turn into dudes. Is that like guy liner? Yes, man it is like guy liner. Exactly. It's the same thing. I'm surprised uh, that... Wow. That it doesn't if uh, if EDH became a thing, this guy would be... So let's look at the differences in prices. Let's look at the uh, daily well, and weekly price things. So Gideon saw a win, so he's up a lot. Um, Oblivion Sower's up quite a bit. I don't know if that's all winners getting checked out. But you can see there's a lot of uh, volatility in the prices right now. Which means it's really hard to tell what's good and not. When to sell, when not to sell. Uh, Radiant Flames doubled in price. For the week, but it's down 30% for the day. Like, there's a lot of really different stuff happening here. Um, wow. Sanctum of Ugin's up quite a bit, too. Let's head down to the bottom and see what's going on here. Less movement. Card's moving down. Unfortunately, Rolling Thunder is a card that's not quite as good and constructed. It may end up seeing a one of in a main deck or one of in a sideboard if there's a big ramp strategy. But you, you often can't afford that level of flexibility at the cost of the inefficiency of Rolling Thunder. It's just too bad when you're not paying a lot of mana in it. Blaze at variants almost never get played unless they have an uncounterable aspect. 
And that's just to beat counter spell decks. Um, yeah, but there's a decent bit of value. I mean, you only have to get a couple of these cards. Let's see, what did, did we get any of these? I don't. We didn't get any of these rares. I don't think we got any of the uh, valuable cards. We did not. Um, it'll break out that way sometimes. There's really only, what, 20, 30 really valuable cards going around. A lot of people are picking them highly, even if they're not good cards, uh, just because they want to... Uh, Make money. Get the cards for their collections or sell them while they're still high. Yeah, selling them while they're still high is a very good idea. Yep. Uh, we recently... I had been sitting on a Zergo and a Targus Command for quite some time. I've been saying since there were one or two ticks. They recently went to five and six, and I sold both of them to somebody for uh, ten ticks, which is a great deal for me and a great deal for them. They saved one tick, and I didn't have to sell to a bot. So, you know, I had these two cards sitting in my binder, essentially, for quite some time, and eventually got to the point where they were worth what I wanted to be worth. All right. We're still waiting on this. Wow. These guys are taking a minute right here. Ooh. Ooh. Um. No, let's go back to play lobby. Instead of look at my sweet abs and beast masters. Um, so there's a couple different lobbies available. I, when things first start, can I make this bigger? I cannot. All right, when um, sets first break out, I usually like to play Swiss just so I can get a feel for the cards, a feel for the, how the cards play. Um, even if you're an 8-4 player normally, playing the Swiss at first will kind of give you that position to understand which cards are getting played when, how this format's kind of shaking out. More rounds is better. Um, I mean, if you have the money and you just want to play 8-4s, and then just jump back in and draft again. That, that has some merit, but getting a really good feel for the deck. Like, let's say we played my the blue-red deck and we lost game one just because we had bad draws, they had good draws, or their deck was better, we made a misplay, something like that. But we wanted to play more of that deck. Playing Swiss lets us play more rounds on that deck and get more experience in understanding that deck. If you can think of uh, each deck as sort of um, its own little class in an RPG. You want to put levels in every single deck. You want to know how to draft every single different deck. The more decks you can draft, the more conscientious you are of the format. You know what to play around. You know what's good in that deck. You know the early key cards in that deck that let you signify so you know what deck you're playing against. Um, you can definitely power level, power level one in one of your decks, right? You can have a preferred deck. So like Brad played this set a lot. And he spent, you know, three out of four of his drafts in uh, some sort of ramp strategy, green-based ramp strategy every time he could, and he felt really comfortable. And he knew which of the uh, ramp spells were best in which order. He knew which of the two, three, four, and which of the ramp spells, when to take the uh, three-cost one over the four, which three-cost ramp spells because there's multiple are better. It makes a big difference. Um whether when it's right to go into the converge ramp deck that plays different colors and when it's right to stay with the Eldrazi one that's more explosive. There's a lot of different variations in that one small deck. In the blue red deck we're playing, right? Whether you want to play more tempo cards, like we're playing a good mix of tempo and kind of um, ground holding cards, but maybe it's better to play a bunch of flyers and uh, evasive cards, unblockable cards with um, four and five drops that gum up the ground. Maybe this set because of the Eldrazi, that's not as good of a strategy and you need to be playing bounce cards. Or maybe you need to play a mix like we are where we're playing a really even kilt uh, version of the blue-red deck. All three different versions of that deck are only six, seven cards different. But depending on how the, the um, limited format is, the draft format is, can decide when you should be playing those. And for competitive people, if you're going to GPs and stuff, understanding how the limited meta game is playing. Remember that the limited will shift just like standard, modern, constructed in general. Sometimes people will be more focused on thinking that the draft strategy, or sorry, the uh, ramp strategies are better. And everyone's trying to push for, I don't know, green-blue or green-black 
dra- uh, ramp, and they're pushing to those. And if you know which decks in the meta counter that, right, that's when you're wanting to play the the bounce blue red deck, right? You think that the bounce decks are going to be really good because people aren't looking at that, or maybe uh, an underneath ally strategy is really good. While everyone's trying to take all these blue, green, black cards, you're picking up red, white allies and pushing this really hyper aggressive deck that doesn't deal as well against mid range strategies, but really punishes aggressive strategies. And that's where you start going from I play cat or not casual, but like fairly serious, but not trying to be professionally serious, or it's called a grinder, but it basically means somebody that plays magic to make small amounts of money so they can play more magic. And that's the break line between, you know, uh, me and Brad play more, a little bit more casually. We don't look at the limited meta game as far as finding out what other people are thinking is the flavor of the week and trying to counter that or anything of that nature. But knowing how to do those things is where that gap goes from. We have a friend that does uh, go to bigger events. He's had... Four, three or four top eights and SEG this events. Yeah, this last weekend. Um, most of his have been in uh, Legacy, but he's a very good limited player. If he eventually, uh, you know, hopefully gets to the point where he can be playing more uh, uh, in the future, if he plays on the Pro Tour or something, the practice he puts in limited will make a big difference. It's hard to be a well branded player unless you play limited, and limited teaches you the value of uh, combat. And he, in fact, plays Infect, which is a combat and combat trick deck in many ways. Playing a lot of limited makes that deck easier to play. All right, we made it. We started the match. We are going to go first. And we will keep this hand, even though it doesn't have any islands. We have two red cards we can play, and they're fairly powerful. And we have a strong amount of islands, so we're likely to draw one within the first three turns. All right, we're waiting for Shroon. <sighs> they pass priority to us. We can do things. We can play land. All right. Ah, wow, we have thing over here. I think it's just spam. Alright. Oh, let's upkeep, sorry. Another blue card. Things could be get bad if we don't draw any uh, islands or red cards. If we just draw a string of expensive cards and blue cards, we could end up in uh, quite the bad spot. I mean, the good news is if we just draw more mountains, rolling thunders are still good. We have two rolling thunders in hand. But uh, we are in a more defensive position. Hopefully we're playing against the red-white life gain deck because it's a little bit slower. Yeah, it looks like we are. Flying in death touch. Um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and attack into that. And hope our opponent blocks. They're thinking about blocking. If they don't block, I'll actually roll in thunder it. I don't want to be in this situation, but using up our mana effectively is a good place to be. They did. All right. Well, if we do not draw any lands, we will lose the game. That is how magic works. No draw lands. Definitely lose. We'd really like to draw an island so we can play this belligerent whiptail um, and start kind of filling out with these other cards right here. Ooh, that's a scary one. All right, well, we drew something we can play, but it's not particularly good. Um, we've been a little bit on the land light side. Excellent. Yeah. So I like to lose magic. Not really. We kept a hand, I think, with uh, two or three ma three mountains and um, two red cards, draw. two blue cards. We haven't drawn any more lands and haven't drawn any more uh, things to play. We did draw this McKinney Slide Runner. Next turn, if my opponent... Well, my opponent's going to attack into it, and that's a problem. But if I was ahead, I would attack my 2-1 into the 3-3 and then rolling thunder it. Just because you need to keep playing spells. We have plenty of things to do with our mana. Um, if our opponent... Oh, gosh. This could get real bad real quick. Hmm. 
Looks like we're going down. Uh, yeah, this is the, we stumbled, and our opponent is playing stuff. Um, these are one of the best sort of kind of slow cards that reward the life gain. They get bigger. If our opponent plays something and gains an instance of one life next turn, he's got two 4-4s. Four fours. And I don't know if we're going to be able to beat two 4-4s four fours because we don't have the mana. If we had more time, Rolling Thunders would do it. Um, maybe with Adverse Conditions and Belligerent Whiptail and Sky Spawn. Next we turn there. we draw a blue mana. Then we can play Adverse Conditions. Hmm. That didn't happen. Well, I guess you play the Whiptail and trade one of them. Now, I can attack the McKinney Slide Runner into this. Well, you're not blocking with it, so you might as well. Oh, he's not going to block because I play land. Yeah, you're not blocking with it, so you might as well turn it sideways. I meant to attack my 2-1 and do a 3-3, three, three, and then I could have burned it with the Rolling Thunder, but I think I'd rather just have the Belligerent Whiptail out. Yeah. Well, you play the land, so he won't block. You shouldn't block. These cards are much better than the McKinney Slide Runner, and the fact that he gains land life makes things like damage a lot less relevant. Yep. So we're still hoping to get that blue land. Uh, the good news is if we get a blue land between Aldrazi Sky Spawner and Adverse Conditions, if our opponent doesn't have a way to get one life a turn, thus making these out of range forever for us, we can um, get to the position where a Rolling Thunder can trade for them. Not too terribly hard. Uh, I guess our opponent, maybe our opponent's multi queuing. They might be double queuing, trying to play more mounds this early on. I'm not a fan of double queuing. It makes things. It reduces your focus. You lose more games. Um, there's also the part where, you know, it's not necessarily polite to other people doing it, although some people are not too concerned about that. It's well, something I'd want to do. So they have 21 minutes to play. That's true. I mean, they can take as long of that as they want. It's their decision. And I mean, the other part that I would think about this, though, is you played a game, let's say you played Hearthstone, and somebody always went to max time every single one of the turns just to grief you, would you consider that a polite or sportsman-like thing to do? I don't know that they're doing it just to grief me, is my point. Like, this guy might be thinking, he might be double queuing. He's he might have a slow internet connection. We don't know. What does this guy rally and do? Um, they gain Vigilance. Mm, okay. I'll block one of those three... Th and he attacks. I think he should attack with both of them. Especially if he has a conduit trick. Oh, I'll, I'll be happy to get that combat trick out of his hand now. There is the one that gives plus one, plus two to two things. Or that. That's fine. Well. Blue mana? Hopefully. No blue mana means we're probably dead this turn. Blue mana! Still not sure we won't do too well. I think we play the adverse conditions, right, and tap both of these creatures down? Uh, on attack. Or uh -huh. we could roll a better one of his creatures. Definitely attack first. Yeah. Do you want to roll a better one of his creatures? Or do you want to adverse conditions and tap them both down? If I adverse conditions and top them both down, I can have two more mana, which doesn't make Rolling Thunder any better, but I can adverse conditions into Sky Spawner to buy a couple turns and try to get to the point where Rolling... How much money do I need for Rolling Thunder to do a lot of damage? Let's see. One, two, um, three, I mean, four, You have five, enough right six. now. No, I mean to hit two targets. I need eight mana. Yes. And you're at five? That's probably going to happen. No. So you took it again. So adverse conditions are rolling thunder one of them. I think we should... I'm not sure which. I think we should rolling thunder... And kill the vampire. Yeah, kill one of the vampires. And, and the next that. turn, rolling thunder and kill the other one? Yeah. Right, and then you hit OK, and then you pay the mana. 
so that is sad. This is not, but that's still one of the strengths of Rolling Thunders. It can just sometimes be a five mana, okay, better move or spell. So now, if you draw a land, you get to kill that and the Eldrazi. Yeah. So I hope you draw another blue land. Here we can consider playing the uh, Adverse Conditions so that next turn we can play the Deathless Behemoth. I think that's what we're going to do. Yep. Yeah. Um, so we don't attack. We pass. Do you want to attack? No reason to attack. I block with the 3-3. Three, three. Well, if you attack... Adverse Conditions. No, no, no. Rolling Thunder? What? He blocks. We can Rolling Thunder and kill two of his cards, right? Um, is that better than playing the Deathless Behemoth on the next turn and totally stopping his attack? He might just have a removal spell. It's just a two for two, though. And he will block with the McKinney Patrol. Yeah, I mean, you won't be getting his best card, but you will get the Deathless Behemoth next turn, and you can always tap the sure. two... Yeah, you're right. It's so tap, more damage. tap the vampire and the human knot. And did you skip your entire turn? What happened? I'm going to do it when he goes to combat. Oh, it's an instant. I did not know that. Yeah, that's why it's a good card. Mm, okay. I think it's a good card being a sorcery, but it's better. It's a lot better. I'm trying to think about what they want to play. We're going to play the Adverse Conditions, tap down the two big guys. Um, we'll happily trade the Castigator, even though we can easily kill it later, just because we need more pressure off the board. And then we'll, if we draw a land, we'll play Deathless Behemoth, and if we don't draw a land, we'll play Deathless Behemoth. Our opponent does have a couple of ways. Let's go ahead and play that. Leave open red. Our opponent does have a couple of ways to um, answer it, but there's not a whole lot. That's unfortunate. Sure. They have a trick. They have a trick. I'm happy to trade my T1 for their 3-1. Yep. Two tricks in a row. Well, and those also get rid of my Deathless Behemoth. If he gains one life gain spell, that plus Deathless Behemoth will put us on the back burner yep. real hard. All right, now we'll draw the land. Hopefully. We are still land light. We'd like to draw a land because then we can play two creatures as well. So they don't untap next turn, right? They do. Oh, they do untap next turn? No, I'm yeah. wrong. They don't. Okay. Uh, is he playing a creature? No, he's, he's double queuing, so we're just waiting for him to pass us priority. Um, so he's not actually very far behind us on time, and, and supposedly he could be double queuing. Probably, because his turn to quick is very slow. Uh, if we draw basically anything, we're going to play the Death, Deathless Behemoth. But after that, it looks like the Infiltrator is pretty good. Um, but actually, if we still have the Deathless Behemoth, the uh, the flying creature is better. Probably. Oh. I mean, this guy's not terrible. We'll definitely play that. We could just play that instead. Nope, nope. play the Deathless Behemoth. 6-6. Six, six. That's the answer. All right, yeah. The reason I don't like playing this as much is if our opponent plays a removal spell, but the fact of the matter is we can just play the Shatter Skull Recruit next turn. Now, the spell that destroys creatures power four or greater, did they have to be attacking? No, Smite the Monsters doesn't. But he has Grisp of Desolation to take us even further back. I mean, nothing we could have done about that. Nope. And it destroyed a land. Took out our island. Nice. Well, that was a fun game. If we draw an island, we can play a lot of spells. If we don't draw an island, we can Rolling Thunder, the Castigator, but that's not enough. We have to draw a land this turn. Doesn't have to be a blue land, but that would be nice. If we draw a land, we can play the Shatter Skull Recruit. And then hopefully draw another land. And, and he'll attack. Back. And then we can uh, de Rolling Thunder. Will he attack into a 4-4? Four, four? 
He might not. I mean, he gets through five damage and puts us to one. Okay. He I would. Will. And our opponent has two cards in hand. We probably lost this match. It's just because we didn't get any lands. If we had lands, the double rolling thunders would have put our opponent way behind. Yep. Um, but Pretty true. Sometimes, you know, your three land hand just doesn't draw any lands for a while. That's part of the variance in the game. And, you know, our opponent did have a decent curve. All right, no lands. Fun stuff. Game over, man. Mm, let's see if we kill this. Well, they're one. But then we draw a land. Doesn't matter. Doesn't yeah. matter. All right, let's go to the next game. We'd rather not show them. We have a second rolling thunder. And I don't think that it matters. It would be too hard. I mean, do we want to try to do the Goblin War Paint? Is it worth it? It's not. Our opponent has removal. We don't want to play anything like All that. All right. Well, looks like we're good then. Mm. Hedron Blade? Not no, worth it? Not good there either. All right. Well, good then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Reproach is the one I was thinking of. That It does have to be attacking and block. Yes. So. Not that that matters. No, no. Our opponent had a couple of small tricks, and I do like that trick. Um, it's actually very good. All right, we have mana. We'll go ahead and get our... Uh, Double red. Oh, wow. What? Now, we do have a lot of expensive costing cards. But our opponent's deck didn't look particularly quick. We just can't draw lands. But we can now draw too many lands. Good. Uh, overcorrecting. Maybe this hand was a little bit of that. Yeah, because that turned to be core casting, and they have at least two. This is this is just terrible luck. Yeah. I mean, that's sad. Our opponent's not going to kill us by then if they don't apply more stuff to the board very quickly. The Oracle of Dust will apply or will clean up the board really quick. We'd really like to drop a four drop of any kind. Literally anything that we could play would be nice. Okay, well, technically that is something we can play. Yeah. We've got plenty of five drops. So you want to play the Menace one first? Now I want to play the Shatter Skull Recruit because he has two of those one costing things to prevent damage from white creatures. That is literally the Menace one. Thank you. Oh, the Menace one. Sorry, I didn't. 3-5. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I think we're going to play Shatter Skull Recruit into some Oracle of Dusts. Good to know we can draw a lot of drops. So now we are going to play nothing but large creatures for the rest of the game. Unfortunately, they don't have much power. They don't need much power. They can block. Uh, so we just kill one of them. Yeah, he's going to play a card to pump it or something. I don't know. Sure. All right, well. Now we'll play another big card. Let's go ahead and play the land. Why not? Yeah, we want to be up on lands. Um, well, or you could Rolling Thunder. Yeah, let's do that. Get six mana, so. Oh, there we go. So it's perfect. We would normally wait to Rolling Thunder until we had a threat out, but we can't afford for our opponent to uh, get another hit in. Yeah! Now our opponent has to play threat. Um, and if our opponent can't get. If our opponent can only play one threat in a turn, all of our threats are better than their threats. Yep. All the cards in our hand almost happen because we have a bunch of big cards. Um, which is not normally where you want to be, but... Well, we stabilized at nine. How terrible. Bah! And we're on a three-turn clock. Nice. Rolling Thunder is about the only thing we got, right? Um, I think that if we start with the 5-5 five, five and then play... Some more of these, we might be able to get close to catching up. Remember, this only gives it to other creatures. It's a 3 4. We have nothing that'll kill it besides Rolling Thunder, right? Yeah, so we're gonna play these two creatures. Mm, I 
think we should probably play the 5-5. Five five. Mm -mm. We attack with these two, and then we play a 9-9 nine nine and put them on a two-turn clock. I think we, uh, we... Uh, uh, okay, I think that's too little too late, but do it. But 5-5 uh, five five requires three attacks. This one requires two. Okay, do it. This is more damage because of the extra counters. I think it's still too late, but we might draw that rolling thunder. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're dead in two turns if he hits lands. There's a ton of ways we lose the game. We get first strike. Attack for three. Can't block. Attack with both. We attack with just the three one. Mm, that's a bad idea. We should just attack with the uh, nope. infiltrator. Shouldn't attack. You should tap to do damage and then play the creature. You should attack with the infiltrator, tap, and then have the Ulamog's despoiler come in as a nine nine. That way, if we kill this, we can kill him in a couple turns. Right? Okay. Seems fine. Only the ingest. And we could have attacked with another. Is it ingest two? No, that won't work. Is yeah. it? In, oh, it's two. Oh, well, then Doesn't I have matter. to play. I forgot that this is the two. No, you still want the five five though. Yeah. I should have attacked with the nettle drum. That way, if he blocked, I'd be happy with the trade. And if he didn't block, then we can untap it with the new mods the spoiler. That was my original plan. Yeah. That's fine. There's a couple misplays here. Our opponent actually plays their turns very quickly. So the fact that they're double king is not very bad. Um, that's fine. Yeah, we could have played the 3-5. It does just a good job blocking. Whatever. What does that do? Kills us. Because he has three attackers. We have two blockers. Oh, it's other creatures. Never mind. Oh, no. He has complete disregard. That's the match. Yep. Well, that was quick. Oh, yeah. They're a quick player. You might should have done the drawing cards and talking a little bit, because now you have a bunch of dead time. Nah, we'll talk about other stuff on that. I mean, the, the match wasn't going to go well, um, no matter what cards we drew or didn't draw. I feel like we lose a lot to mana flood or creature drawing the wrong creatures at the wrong time. I mean, that's, that's the variance of the game. We make... Fairly good plays, so if us and our opponent make... If we're playing against other people, we usually don't make too many bad plays. I think that we should have played the 3-5 in case we drew something the next turn. Or something like that, because if we... And I think we should have attacked with the 3-1 and not the other one. Because we attack with the 3-1, he blocks it, we trade. He doesn't block it, we play our guy and we untap. Um, and then playing the 3-5... No, I mean, we were in a position where we needed to kill the flyer, or chump block the flyer, or we were going to lose no matter what. So we have to play to our outs. We have to play to... Well, if we draw the best card, what's the best way to win? And that's what we should have been focused more on to get there. Yeah, it's it's sad that our basically only out was the uh, the Rolling Thunder. Yeah, we drew one of the two. Played well, right. we had the Stone Fury as well. We just haven't seen it. three damage, right? It does damage equal number of lands. Oh, which would have been exactly enough. More than enough. It's only a four toughness creature. We had six. Um, I mean, the real problem is we just didn't draw early cards that game. Which, mm. I mean, we did keep... A hand with a whole bunch of expensive cards. That was but we kept a, land, a hand with four lands and a bunch of expensive cards. I don't think we could have mulligan for something better. No, we, on sh average. we shouldn't have mulligan because we didn't see that many aggressive cards from him. We only saw the one core castigator, even though he had multiple. He's playing in a fairly aggressive deck. But we didn't know that, and with the knowledge we had, we made the best plays we could. And that's all you can do. Uh, this format's not particularly fast. If he was in red or green, I might have considered it. But even then, I'm not... 
super keen on mulliganing early, especially with us. We drew basically every single expensive creature we had in the in the deck. Yeah, which can happen. Um, actually, we might have drawn every one of them. Actually. We we did. We drew all expensive creatures, but that'll happen sometimes. You know, if we drew one or two more removal spells instead of expensive creatures, we could have been in a position to, you know, not use that first Rolling Thunder and Rolling Thunder and then the game, etc., etc. There's a whole lot of what-ifs. They didn't come up quite how we'd hoped. That's just part of it. We have one round left. And that'll finish us up for today. What do we want to look at? Let's look at decks. Decks doesn't work. Uh, you have to click the things below decks. I have to click metagame. So let's look at the cards. The actually, let's look at Star City for the cards that just did well. Um, I'm actually thinking about selling my Foot Jace because he's going up a lot. If you guys haven't seen yes. Jace, let's look at him real quick. Um, Jace, Vrin's Prodigy. So I got one of these. So I'll be trying to shuffle this off. Um, it, it's about Whoa. sixty dollars. That's incredible. Um, I don't know why it's so... So the factors to make a current card this high, it's playing modern, and at top there were 16 copies in the top eight. So there were a lot. So there's a lot of demand for it in modern and for the um, stand for standard. So I need to get rid of it now because it's very unlikely that it'll perform better next week. If it performs better next week, it would increase in price. I don't think more. it could go up past $80. Probably not. So um, I would be selling uh, it to one of our local, crazy. local shops for around 60 which is fine. Uh, you know, that's one of the nice parts is speculating. Now, I actually considered heavily selling my card at 40 because it's very rare for a card to break 40. I, I do not but think... But laziness is what saved you. This laziness. Time. But um, because 40 is the normal high point for, for most cards. Uh, it's been a while since a card broke 70. It's been a while since a card broke 50. Yeah. Well, the thing is, Jace this cost... Jace last time, actually. Jace cost two, and he's playable in multiple formats. Um, Gideon's great. But he costs four. You can't play four Gideons in modern. There are modern decks that play four Jaces. There are standard decks that play four Jaces. There are going to be, there may be people that try in Legacy to see if he's viable in Legacy or Vintage. He's probably not. Mm, he might be. I mean, they but, didn't think he would be in modern, but he did. But he's cheap enough for you to try. And that makes a big difference. Um, it's a huge. That, that's literally the only reason to play it. It is. Because he costs so little. So the other part with this is Hangerback Walker is a great card that's seen play in a lot of different formats too. But if you'd have to guess the price, the difference in price is the rarity. $80 for a also card. they just reprinted Hangerback Walker. In what? A Vindic. They did? Yep. Oh. So his price hasn't been affected very much, even because of that. Hmm. His low is 10. It's not actually been reprinted yet, I guess, because they don't have it. So yeah. So I guess it's coming. Well, I was going to get rid of mine, too. But, I mean, the th thing with it is... Hanger Black Walker is just as an in-demand card as Jace, maybe even more, but it's cheaper because rare is the mythic. One thing people talk it's not a lot about as much as modern. Hanger yeah, Black. Yeah, a, a little less, but I think it's played with more um, standard decks. Maybe I don't know. I don't play standard. I, yeah, it's in more standard top um, 30, sixty-four list by quite a bit. But the fact is, one's a rare and one's a mythic. So a lot of times people are yeah. So let's look at uh, the Atlanta Open. Megamorph, Megamorph. Jeskai Black decks, which are just splashing a little bit of removal. And uh, Megamorph, Jeskai Black. So one of the things that I talked about coming to fruition, totally did, which was four color decks, which are three color core decks, splashing for one card. Um, the one that they're splashing for here is we see Crackling Doom, Utter Intel, some black quality removal. Just a little bit of removal makes this deck go from okay to very, very good. Because red can answer a lot of the smaller creatures easily, and Crackling Doom always answers the biggest ones. Mm -hmm. And literally the mana base. But how much was Jeskai? How many times did you see Jeskai represent, what was it? Uh, half? One, two, three. Yeah, Jeskai represents half. When was the last time Jeskai represented half in the standard modern game? And it's, 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 mm, I don't it know. never has. That's usually Abzan. But, you know, yeah. Jeskai with removal is excellent. And I, I plan to see Abzan running blue cards or Abzan running Crackling Dooms. We've seen it before, but now the mana base makes it no problem. Yeah. Let's look at a couple of these green-white um, decks. Right, so you see the, the Hangerback Waffers, Walkers, Waffers. And then the Megamorph is 
Din Protector, Dead Mist Raptor, you get Hidden Dragon Slayer. Yeah. This is a very aggressive Maybe you should go slow enough people can actually look at sure. the cards. Hangerback Walker. I like that for a modern mostly, but it's good in that deck as well. I think it's it fits in most decks. I mean, the thing about it is, if you are playing a deck and it needs a two drop, you can just play a Hangerback Walker. And if you're playing a deck and it needs a four drop, then you can play a Hangerback Walker. If you need a if deck. If you need a deck as, as a creature with a mana sink, you can play Hangerback Walker. Yeah. So it's pretty good. Uh, Using the Death Mist. Nothing really out of the ordinary here. I I think it's weird they're playing Warden. I guess that got a lot better with the rotation. So. I think a lot of it's you can't play Fleece Main Lion. It's your Fleece Main Lion. You don't have other one drops. It's your Fleece Main Lion. That's it. it. You know, if you can't play Fleece Main Lion, you might as well play the next best thing. Wingmate Rock got um, back in favor. That's good. Command. And Valor Stance, I really like. It's a really simple deck. It's just this really efficient beatdown deck. With a, it's an early aggro deck that has a lot of reach because the Dim Protector, Death Miss Raptor, Hidden Dragon Slayer just put a lot of resilience into the deck. Um, mm-hmm. But there's nothing really. I mean, Gideon helps the deck a lot, right? You can four and then just make all your guys bigger, which is awesome. You can plus two. There's not any real big synergies, but creatures are good. Like, this deck doesn't even have anything to do with extra creatures. Nope. But the fact that it runs 24 creatures means that you have four flexible cards. If you think your opponent's holding that rune as path, you just ult him. It's just it. I mean, sure, your opponent can kill a creature, but most of your creatures turn into more creatures. Yep. Every one of these cards is a two-for-one. This is mm-hmm. multiple cards. This gets back, comes back. This gets another card back. This usually kills a creature. Um, this one's not, sorry. This one's not a two-for-one. Oh, but if it gets big enough, it just kills everything. Because right. you can uh, do multiple times at five counters. This is two cards. Um, and this is a land drop, but you can see that this deck is an aggro deck that has one, two, three, four, five mana sinks that all cost two or three. They all cost yep, two or three, and then a five drop. So it can use the mana, and it can kill you on three. I think that's the reason we're seeing it. I expect this list to be very similar. Yep, almost exactly the same. Let's look at the other ones. Yeah, this one has a silk wrap. That's about it. Um, There's another two Megamorphs. This one's Bant. Let's look at the other green white one just to see this one's... Looks basically the same. Yeah, we see Stasis Snare. They're all the same. I think the other one's... I think the other one's running more lands. Let's look at that one more time. I want to see how many lands this one's running. No, that's you. This one's running one more land. Hmm. So I, well, I guess the reason they're not running, oh no 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 no, they're running more Dragon Lucas commands and Valor stances. Never mind, that's wrong. Yeah, they're all running seven. They're all running twenty four and seven. So I assume that they they all work together, having the identical stuff in slightly different land bases. Well, let's check out the Bant Megamorph real quick. Uh, very what's Stratus Dancer? Stratus Dancer is a flip card that counters an instant or sorcery spell. So that's what you get by playing Bant. It's a powerful card. Protects you from wraths. And the that lands is, are so good, whatever. That's they're running, basically it. They're literally running two things to counter powerful spells. And then out of the sideboard, they're running another thing to counter. They're just running a counter self speed. So this deck is a little bit stronger against uh, counters. That's it. They were just worried that someone would play a hard control or a mid-range control deck, and this, this deck is a lot better. It's also, small. notably, this is Tom Ross. Hey, Tom Ross. What's up? You can click on Tom Ross. As you can tell, Tom Ross is a good magic player. Yep. A lot of second and thirds. All right, let's look at this Jeskai Black. All right, and this made up a large amount of the format as well. Mm, Mantis Rider, Mentor, Seeker, Dragon, Chase. So the Black is coming in, and you're soaring and removal. Whether it's Murderous cr- Cut, Crackling Dunes. Um, mm. Is there anything in the side? The sideboard Dragon Lord Silver Guard's interesting. That's not terrible. Right, being able to kind and of soaring. and so, so you can kind of sideboard. They've got the exert influence because they're playing uh, four colors. That's pretty cool. You can kind of sideboard into a control deck with this. What's right? self-inflicted wound do? It, it sacks the green and white. Dromacas often. Nice, but it's good against the green and white decks. Um, so you can one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, you can just sideboard into a control deck with this. That's one. pretty cool. And how many black cards are they actually running? Not very. I think there's running one, two, three. Three. Hmm. But remember, you can backdoor, and by backdoor what I mean is you can um, 
you can use your black, red to get either color on that. Yep. You can use your uh, fetch blue, probably black fetch to get red. Everything, right? Yep, they all do. And that's the real trick. Uh, the fact that you can use your black, red one to get red or white. Black, red. Does black, red get red, white? No. It gets black and it gets red. Oh, it's the uh, allied wedges that get all the colors. So this one has slightly worse mana, which they're running the Battlefield Forge. When the second set comes out, then they'll run the perfect mana. Sorry. Um, the Esper wedge and all those, mm. the Jun wedge, they run better mana. Interesting to say. I mean, if we see a Jun deck, it will have really good mana. I'm not sure there's incentives to play the cards, but the mana base is there. Mm, this is... Not running the Sorens. They're running Gideons. Mm. A little bit just... different. They're just running the four Crackling Dooms in the main. Now, the other deck was not running Dig. They're done. That's impressive. Yep. They're running a Tassiger. So, interestingly, they are running um, They're running Felder Cub. Command. They're running Felder Cub just, just to get rid of the uh, really effective white-based enchantment stuff. That's cool. It's not something I would have thought about putting in my sideboard. But it's a really good answer, right? It's better than a Naturalize and a Beatdown deck. Uh, very similar. They're running a one Dragon Master. System. All the Dig Through Times, though. This is a slower version. This is more of a controlling one. This says Jeskai Black, but this is actually... I'm running, what? Four? They're running eight aggressive creatures. And just a bunch of control. Yeah. Alright, let's see what Jeskai Dragons is running. Hmm, looks like... It's just a Jeskai Beatdown deck. Mid range. Mid range. With, with dragons. Yeah, the two dig through times to get back into it. Ojitai's command's been doing pretty well. I'm surprised. I mean, it just has the right shell. We just didn't have the right shell to go with it. It has a lot of powerful effects. Um, I think my first thought was that the two costing commands were the best, or the two and the threes. It, it does go by mana. That's actually the way it goes. But that said, I thought all of them were strong. And if we got in a really control heavy meta, people would play Silver Guard Command. Um. But right now we're seeing a lot of medium-sized creatures, right? And Ojitai's command with Dragon Master Outcast is awesome, by the way. You know, your opponent does something, counter-target creature spell, get my creature back. End of turn, after you can't cast sorceries, which mostly kill creatures, put my Dragon Master Outcast with six lands into play and draw a card. It's a good play. I mean, you only need one Dragon Master Outcast to make it happen. And with the Dig Through Times, you can get there. I'm sure that they saw that play quite often. All right. And then we start 20 more minutes to talk. Daniel will fill the gap. It's 35 minutes, you know. Oh, they can only play for another 20 minutes. Ooh. I'm not second like, tired. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's head down to the uh, the next ones. And we're not gonna actually going to go into any of these that are the same, right? We see more green-white Megamorph, more Bant, uh, Amardu Dragons, which we can look at in Tarka Red, which I'm expecting to be mostly aggressive decks. Let's see what Jessica aggro's. Jeskai Black's going pretty far down this list, which is pretty cool for a new deck. Mid-range. Now we're getting to a lot of the more regular ones. The first Abzan deck plays 21st. No, sorry, 19th. It's It'll pretty be crazy. Back on top next week. Yeah, no, but it's been a long time since Abzan's not had a top um, 16 finish. A very long time. That's crazy. Is Siege Rhino finally dead? The answer is no. Actually, no. it's not. No. We're going to start seeing things like... Um, uh, what's the wedge that's uh, blue, green, black? Blue, green, black, Sultai? Yeah, we'll see like Sultai running. Uh, we might see like really hard Sultai decks running, uh, what do they call Ab or oh. Siege Rhinos. This is like the greatest hits of uh, creatures right here. Are they just putting a bunch of stuff Man. out and making you answer every single creature? Yep, it's amazing. What do the spells look like? So the mana base is the tricky part. But the fact of the matter is, they're probably running enough basics that they can get any two basics they want, and then after turn two, turn two they're just coming in. How many the best charm, dig. So uh, I'm blood stained. They're blood just running roars to kill things. Delves. All right. So wait. Um, nice. How many total fetches are they running? Uh, four, eight, uh, nine, ten, eleven. Looks like. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Oh, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Nice. And they're running one, two Lumbering Falls. I guess because they can't be interacted with. Hmm. None of the other ones, because I think Lumbering Falls is the better of the two. 
So I like this. I mean, all these cards are two-for-ones or must-answers. All these cards are two-for-ones except for Dragon Lord Jamal. And I, and I really like that they're running the Radiant Flames and the Dig Through Times. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, like... I'm oh, sorry. Uh, I like the Draconic Wars, right? I mean, it doesn't matter if they don't hit a dragon. It's not about that. It's about killing a creature. Two mana kill a creature is all they wanted. Uh, let's see. They've got three... So let's imagine the best curve. What are they? What's their two? They don't have one drop. So they play... Hanger back. The hanger back into Catacomb Sifter into Siege Rhino. Or is it Jace into Catacomb Sifter into Siege Rhino? All good options. Oh, God, uh, Marty good. Dragons... I think this is, you know... Don't, I, don't we know him? Cecil Washington? Yeah, isn't that the one that we know? I don't know. Right-click him. Let's see if he has a bunch of... Po if he has a bunch of... Um, this is his first thing, I think it is. Oh, no. Wait. Yeah, it is. Huh? Oh, wow. Yeah, it is. It is him. Wow, he did great. Nice, he did 12. That's we not bad. This guy. Yeah. This is a cool deck, too. This deck's been around for a while, the Marty Dragons deck. Yeah. I do not personally think that it's... it's. I think the Blue Splash makes a big difference. It opens up the Blue Dragons and a lot of spells. Um, but the mana base is a little bit harder to come by. That's oh, cool. Our match has actually started. We don't have to talk forever. Yeah, oh, we'd like to play first. We'd like to go first. That's a keep. All right. Uh, do we want to go get the second red on the first turn? Yeah. We don't have any double blue cards. I'll let you. I'll let you run it. So I'm not sure how I feel about Sur Sure Strike because we haven't got to use it, but it looks powerful. Like three attack and first strike does mean that the McKinney Slideburner can kill a five drop, or if we play a land, a six drop. Like so I think we should go red, red, then blue. If we don't think we're going to hit a three drop, we can play land, land McKinney Slideburner, evolving monster two. Which I think is the wrong play, by the way. Yeah. But we can. Right. Well, if we were playing a deck with more landfall creatures, I would consider it heavier. But we're only playing the one. Or two McKinney Slide Runners. Alright, so play Evolving Wilds. Don't mess this up. Yeah, we just get a second red. Then we play the McKinney Slide Runner, and we start attacking with it, and we aggressively use our Sure Strike. Because I want to uh, buy more time to get to the Oracle of Dust and another 5 drop. So I think you should play Double Red so they don't know our second color yet. Yep. Even though it probably won't matter in most matches. Nope. And then you play the Island and Attack. They got nothing, huh? Alright, so we could use a land. Land would be good. For the next two turns of the For the rest of the game, if we just only drew lands, we don't probably win. Mm, maybe. Alright, Seek the Wilds. They're looking for a creature or a land. Right? Mountain entered the revealed card zone. Alright, our opponent is playing uh, Naya! Land. Nope. Ask and you shall not receive. Well. Alright. Listen that fourth land drop. That's uh, gonna, gonna be bad. I'm probably gonna play a creature, and we can almost definitely run it and tack into it. Let's go ahead and attack into it first. If not, I'll blow it up. I would not block this creature. Like for them, if we don't draw the lands, they will eventually win. Yeah, that's how the game normally goes. You've got to draw some lands to win. I um, mean, the good news for us is one land will be able to let us cast multiple spells. On the other hand, let's go ahead and attack. Wow. That's impressive. Uh, our opponent does need to play something. Mm. Yeah. And if we hit a land and attack with both... That would be pretty much the only thing. Let's always yield to McKinney Slide Runners. Let's always, always yield to this one, too. Yep, 
Your opponent's just going to die from not playing stuff. Like, well, we're going to adverse condition them at the end of turn and kill them. Uh, how? Oh, because they're going to play a creature. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, they outnumbered to kill one of our creatures. That's a good play for them. Um, if we had one more mana, we could have stone fury this guy, but we don't. So do you still want to tap it down and make a creature and attack for three? Yeah, I will. Okay. I'll have to tap for lethal with the sure strike. Oh, okay. So just be sure to do that. So I think you should, what does that do? Fight? Yep. I think that counters our spell too. Oh, okay. That was impressive. And now we have literally nothing we can do. Well, there's not that many turns left for opponents to start playing stuff. Uh, if they play a big all draws and we don't have any creatures, we'll lose. If we draw a land, um, no, that's not enough. Hopefully we draw a land. Okay, well, we'll just go ahead and play our... Um, yeah, we play our Shatter Score Recruit, put them on dead. And then turn against their creature on the next turn? Or Stone Fury, if we need Stone Fury, or Rolling Thunder them. Like, we have a bounty of ways to murder our opponent who has done nothing for far too many turns. Every card in our hand is basically lethal except for these two. And these two together are lethal. Hmm. Pretty um, risky. They're probably going to Wrath. That is incredible. Um, so are we going to turn against... Okay, they need to kill before attackers. Okay. Yeah. All right, that's it. We didn't see anything, so... We also don't have it. anything. <laughs> um, I would consider bringing in a Dispel if I saw something like a turn against... And against, like, a black-red deck with removal, instant speed removal, and that. Yep. Um, One land. Two lands. Two lands. Is that enough? I mean, that hand is pretty abysmal. I would probably mulligan that hand. I've got two, three pieces of removal and some fours. What, though, you, can, you can't... I guess it doesn't matter, but you can't play anything. You've got two lands. Mm. It's, it's really up to you. If we don't draw any lands, we lose. If we do draw lands, pretty decent card. I'm going to try this because I didn't see my opponent play anything at all. Yep. Fertile Thicket. Me and Brad are just split on this. I am heavily in favorite, and Brad thinks it's, it's awful. It's an okay card, Ooh. but uh, I do not like. I do not like it over many of the cards. No, don't. Oh, why would you do that? What do you mean? Why would you go get a land when you might draw the other one? Oh God! I why are you my, so bad at this game? My brain just completely left. I was like, I want an F six, and not. I should not do. Oh, Oh my goodness. Well, oh my god, you're so right. I know I'm right. I didn't think I needed to just say that out loud. I just slipped my mind, man. All right. The good news is we can play Touch of Void now. Oh, terrific. I don't know what that card does. Oh, it would murder us if we didn't have Touch of Void. Oh. If it be dealt damage and has a 1 1 counter, prevent that removal counter. I would almost always. Kill that immediately. Wait until I have a land to play after it, because then it's not killed by red removal. It's a good point. Our opponent literally... We have no way to kill that card if our opponent waited one more turn. It's a good point. But well, your mistake is not as bad as theirs. However, you're the reason we can't... Well, actually, no. The, we don't have any blue cards, so you're not doing anything. I like Roll of Th Thunder against Silas Watcher. If we draw a land, I'll probably kill two Scions. 
I'm wow. Some science. Beautiful. Just so they can't ramp up big stuff. And because we have way. plenty of more removal. It's unfortunate I didn't have one more mana because this IS Watcher is keeping back this Nettle Drone, but this will be it. If we draw land, Shadow Skull Recruit, otherwise we just Nettle Drone. Yes, attack us for one. Do it. That guy's pretty good. We'll kill it when we want to. Wow, perfect. This was my plan all along, Brad. This was not my plan all along. But yeah, um, so we've got our five drops. I'm just not that impressed with Seek the Wild. It feels like Anticipate. Puts it on top, right? No, it puts it in your Put hand. Put in your hand. It's the kind of card that's your first to cut up. I like it more in the four color deck, right? Or the the three color deck my opponent's running with strong singleton creatures where you're looking for specific cards and Fire Mantle Mage, for those who haven't seen him. Um, it's a 2-2. Two -two. It's a 2-2, two -two, and when it comes into play, your creatures have to be, or gain menace. Hmm. Okay. Let's go ahead and hide that. I know what that does. Um, why would you block that? Don't block. I have more creatures to play. Um, I mean, you're just asking for a combat trick. Like, That's fine. You're giving them a free combat trick, and you can just tap them down later. Yeah, but if they use up the combat trick, then I'll be able to... Yeah, yeah, but things. but you can punish them way more with that instant speed Stone Fury later. It's a good point. I forgot about Stone Fury. Yeah. Stone Fury Don't is Don't block. That's... If I didn't have Stone Fury, I would have blocked. Because I want my opponent to tap out and play stuff. I don't want them playing other stuff. That said, they don't really want to play the uh, yeah, Fire Mantle Mage for no value. Mm, so you have five exactly? Yeah, if we drew a land, I would have. Uh, so it. you can play. You can attack with the menace. I'm gonna attack with the menace. You cannot and play block. Adverse conditions. Um. So that next turn, I can rolling thunder and kill two of his two twos. What? Well, okay. I, I agree with the attack. However, I think you might want to play the nettle drone and the coral of god. And then block and let him use his tricks? No. Just and then to... continue not to block. And try to race him? No, he, he'll stop attacking, but you'll be unblockable then. So you stop playing things and just be unblockable. Okay. That's, that makes sense too. See, and think about it. If I were to play a red land and a rolling thunder, they'd just murder these two creatures, and then they actually they would murder our whole board. No, oh, wouldn't. yeah. I mean, they would, they would murder, murder two of our creatures and do two damage, but then get an attack for five more. Yeah, they would, but the off chance that they have it after we have two in the same draft, no, it's very low. And it's not a card you can play around because if you try to play around, rolling, you're thunder, just gonna lose. You can't play against it early because it'll kill you, and you can't play against it late because it'll kill you. You just gotta play your stuff out into the rolling now, thunder. And if we get another land, we can kill two of those their creatures. That's not a terrible play. Yeah, we're getting to the point where we don't need to save Rolling Thunder for killing a big card because Stone Fury will do it for us. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. You called See, it. I knew he wouldn't attack anymore. It's... All right, so now... We attack. He blocks. We Stone Fury the thing he kills. He doesn't. Um, so you're saying we Stone Fury so that our menace lives because he's not going to... Tr even if he triple blocks, it doesn't matter. Yeah, we attack with everything. We let him pump whatever he wants to pump, and we Stone Fury whatever he pumps. Mm, that's a bad play. Why? Well, our 3 1 trades with a 1 1. We don't want that. Okay, well, we attack with our the 4 4. Our 2 1 that makes things unblockable trades with his random stuff that doesn't do anything. Also, doesn't he have 8 mana? No, he has 7. Okay. Yeah, we At 8 mana, he becomes very dangerous. So we attack with the Shatter Skull here. I've got, I got to go here. I mean, do we attack with it? Yeah. And make it unblockable, or do we just attack with it? We attack with it. Either stone, we either you gonna use Stone Fury, or we're gonna Rolling Thunder. Well, okay. You don't actually have to do anything yet, so just wait, wait. And then when he uses the spell that pumps one of them, you kill that one, right? 
Oh, he saved that one. He made the smart play. Okay, well, he's not doing anything, so... He's going to do it now. Because I was going to kill the Orn Reef, regardless of what he bumped. Alright, so now you just kill it. Mm -hmm. It's five minutes. Go. Alright, so don't F6 through his turn because you have to use your Void Guard. Yeah. So, the one reason I did want to attack with the multiple creatures, I wanted to block that their spot, but then we would be trading one of our better cards for one of our worst cards. Oh, Rogue Grove Rumbler. Alright, so now you just tap them both down and attack, right? I think I just Rolling Thunder them both. Oh, can you kill them both with Rolling Thunder? Uh, if I draw land, I can. Right? Uh, one, two, that's not. Three, four. Yeah. If I draw land, I have five. Yeah, just rolling thunder them both. Yeah, they did. Just did okay. Oh, okay. Pay all your mana. Alright, so do you have a trick? And if you do have a trick, I'll hit you for four. Yeah! <laughs> they quit! I don't think that's the right place to quit, because of the six, seven, eight, nine. They have another turn. Um, they might not have any wraths, but then there's nothing else to get into it. Well, your stuff's unblockable if you want it, so. Yeah, yeah if they have like a wrath. I mean, I can see them conceding if they know their hand. Or if they know what's in their deck, too. Alright, that's... That's the matches, right? That's the matches. Um, that, you know, that's going to set us at two and one. Two and one, so we get two packs, right? We get two packs. You know, I, I would have liked to do better in the, in the other round where we had that. Our opponent was good. Our opponent did have a good deck, and we had... Not the greatest draws. Now, have they stopped doing four three two twos? We have those, or but five we'll, three two twos. We'll either play eight fours, Swisses, or six two 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 twos. Yeah, that's the one I want. Six two 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 twos. I didn't see those with Origins, and I don't know they exist. It's because there's it's the older cons. Sense. Six yeah. two two two. So, so is what, that is that they're just not doing it so for what, the newest set. I think what they're doing is that they're incentivizing. They're still trying it out. They're seeing, do people really care if it's four three two twos, or do people just play whatever? But if more people play older sets, which usually get less play, and six two 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 twos, because they feel like it's a better value, then Wizards has empirical data that they should just play six two 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 twos. See, in my mind, they're doing a really good job of maximizing their profit, but a really poor job of providing a product that is that is good for mid-level players, which is what most people are because it's mid-level. Yeah, and the other thing that I think about the the um, 4332, that, that argument you made, is that they make so much profit that they should be more concerned about what people want, even if they have a monopoly on it. Like a pharmaceutical company can charge quite a bit of money, but they make an obscene amount of profit, so at some point your image counts more for than anything else. Yeah, and so I guess, I guess what it goes down to on a basic level is uh, six two two twos give out twelve packs. Eight fours give out twelve packs. Uh, four three two twos give out how many packs then? Yeah, they give out eleven or one less. Sorry, not eleven. Uh, yeah, yeah 11. they give out eleven. 11. So basically, what they're doing is making sure that they don't give out as high prize support on new releases, which is like you said, they have the monopoly, quote unquote. But they're they're just kind of being mean about it. I would really like to see six four one ones. I think that would be the one I'd love to play most because you're really, you, you are rewarded for doing well, but you're also rewarded for doing okay. The only thing you're not rewarded for doing is marginal. Is losing the first round, and then winning two. Yeah, that doesn't get you anything. But that never gets you anything, which is fine. So you know, yeah. I can see it either way. I mean, whoa, whoa, what's a 6 2 2 2 Swiss draft? That's a cool one. Where it's just records. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't see how that would matter. It, it goes by tiebreaker. So uh, yesterday I played an Origins draft, and um, I drafted. I ended up in a deck that just. It was open, but I ended up in blue white, which is not a great deck. Yeah, but, but going by tiebreakers, but only playing three rounds, you're still going to have a winning and losing bracket, right? It's whoever If you win lost. three in a row, you're the six. You're the six. And then if you're the person that came in second, you're the two. And then third and fourth 
Depends on who wins that match. Depends on when you won and lost, I guess, right? And how you won and lost. It, yeah, it mostly just depends on the people you lost to. I think I would rather just play a normal 6 2 2, two than play a Swiss 6 2 2. two. Um, so, what ended up happening for mine, 6 2 2, two regular, is I lost the first two matches. It went to game three both times, and I narrowly lost. It was terrible. And I was sad. But I enjoyed the deck. The deck was actually kind of cool. I got to play a. Uh, what is the angel one that makes the 4-4? Four, four? The enchantment that makes 4-4 four, four angels whenever you play an enchantment? I don't remember the name of it, but I know what you're talking about. Anyway, I gotta play that, which is really rare. I gotta play, like, a cool aggro control deck, but or sorry, aggro combo deck. In the last round, I beat this guy. And that guy ended up playing four, placing fourth, even though he ended up losing either his first round or his second round. He lost either his first or second round, won the other round, and then lost to me. But because the person he lost to was the person that got in first... Then he ended up getting fourth. So you would rather it be that way? No, no, that's a little weird. Yeah, so I, so I would rather just play a normal 6-2-2-2. Two, two, two. Um, it's, it's really disheartening that they want to make 4 3 two twos the new set, and I think that might make me play less online. Yeah, the, really, the, if they wanted to maximize profit, though, the Swiss gives away the fewest packs, right? Um... Let's Just see. straight Swiss gives away the fewest packs, I believe, mathematically. It's a pack per win. So there will be two people that get... Or one person that gets three packs. Uh, f- is it two people or three? It's three people or four people that get two packs. Okay, so maybe they do give away more packs that way. It's going to take a little bit of math to figure that right, let's out. Do that. One person gets three. The person that loses to them gets two. The two people that come in the next bracket get two and two. And then... um, Does everyone else just get... Then there's three one-packs. So it's the same. And then one person gets zero. So it's the same. They get 12. They get 12. Uh, um, So anyway, I... I But the other part with it is people are are more incentivized to buy less cards if they earn more cards. But it's a very marginal amount. It's not a one-to-one. Right? Your goal isn't to obtain 50 packs a week. And you'll play limited until... X amount of packs and you'll buy the rest. You'll you just play X amount of money. You're buying the experience more than you're buying the tickets. And there's a slight amount of people will buy and open things to achieve things for constructed. But there's a lot of people that just play um, limited. Giving away more packs takes away a slight amount of money out of your pocket too because you're giving them more money. Yeah, they're, they're definitely maximizing money by having four three two twos. However, I think the bad taste in my mouth that I get... Uh, is enough that I don't play as much online. Yeah, I don't play four three two twos. Um, so are they the same amount of money to enter? Yeah, all of these are the same. Or sealed and draft. Sorry, sealed and draft have different prices because they're different amounts. Yeah, but but all of sealed is the same, right? Yeah, uh, I think sealed is actually technically cheaper because it costs less. Oh, that's a that's a phantom. Let's see if I can find one that's not phantom. Well, just just see how much the six two two twos are for origins. 26 event tickets. Okay, so yeah, these are cheaper because technically you get the packs without the event tickets. What are you looking for again? 6222s. Two, two, two. So how much are how much are they to get into? The same amount. They're 14 or whatever? Yeah. Okay. We're all the same. So all the drafts are the same price to get into? Regardless of the price payout. It, it's dependent on what products you're getting of putting in. So. All right, but that's going to wrap it up for today, guys. We've been talking for a while. Um, we will be doing more battles into car. I enjoyed playing this deck. It was cool. I mean... I got to play like a blue red sort of like controlling aggro tempo deck. I like that a lot. It's cool. Um, Next going, time we'll be trying to force a little drowsy again. We'll, we'll keep pushing for it. I mean, I really think it's going to be the most fun to play. I think allies is a trap. I think trying to go multicolor is a trap. And so that basically leaves us with the kind of deck we played. Uh, various combinations of colors that all seem to be just basically playing creatures like we were. And some spells. Or playing Eldrazi, which I think is the the flagship of the set. So here's what I like about starting with the Life Druid. If you end up in multicolor allies, good. He's a base. If you end up in ramp with con- converge sub things, like two or three converge caps, good. If you end up in pure ramp, good. Here's what I don't like about the cards, like the the two and a green, put two one one Eldrazi in the play. Like I don't like that as a first pick. It's a more explosive ramp card. But if you don't end up in the ramp deck. Um, what it's, have you it's, really accomplished? It's not a terrible creature. Paying three mana for 
two bodies is fine, especially how many creatures with one toughness we saw. Like the Murfrope guy, great creature, has one toughness. Uh, the Castigator can't be blocked by it. But there's a couple of allies. There's the McKinney slide run. There's a lot of good one toughness creatures, so they're not irrelevant. But they're not nearly as good as the Druid, even though the Druid is a little less explosive. So if I had to choose between the one that made two one ones and the Druid, I'm definitely taking the Druid. And I think you're right. You're correct. All right, well, that's it for today, guys. We will catch you again later. We will do more Battle for Zendikar. Um, we might do some... Uh, God, probably just right. Battle for Zendikar. Well, Hearthstone, and uh, probably once I get my setup, or maybe another day of... Uh, if we have a short stream, it'll be the... Uh, what is it? Card? Castles? Castle card? Yeah, ca uh, Cards and Castles. Cards and Castles. I, I will eventually, once I'm good enough, uh, play Heroes of the Storm. Uh, We're still working on, on that. We are quite bad. Well, not quite bad. Well, we are quite in the middle. Terrible. We're, we're quite in the middle. Average. And quite in the middle. Is, is... We could probably win a couple of games that were actually ranked, but it would require our whole team to be on. That doesn't happen every day. So, I right, guess if there's anything else you want to see from us, remember we're at MobiusPick at gmail.com. MobiusPick.